this is Joe from the Stone Age, and you're listening to the Phantasm Podcast. It's like totally awesome. There's like fine chicks that listen to this podcast. Don't be no worm. What is up? Welcome to the Phantasm Podcast. I'm Corey Grovecrest. With me, the Surgeon General, Dr. Vincent West. <laughs> the Surgeon General. Hell yeah. Oh, okay. That sounds cool. I didn't know I had made it that far. You're the only Surgeon General. Just not not the current, you know, like politically, just podcast-wise. You're the Surgeon General podcast. Anyway, uh, this is a very special 25th anniversary episode here. A celebration. 25 years of Phantasm. 25, 25 years of Phantasm. <laughs> Men who spent their lives on a never ending quest for honor, glory, and five chicks. I don't want to get sued, but uh, <laughs> yeah, this is amazing. Uh, very special. Uh, yeah, 25th anniversary of an old film called The Stone Age. came out in 1994. Every Saturday night, all they do is the same old thing. So you got a plan tonight or what? I got a radically hellacious plan. Fit the jack just to take the edge off. Get those chicks all horn dogged out. What chicks? Hanging with the buds. Check it out, man. It's Jack, Jack Meister. Hang a loogie on <laughs> Searching for a party. What's your ratio here, man? It's like 35 to 3 out here. Staying out of trouble. Are you going to boogie with the foxes tonight? Now, if you want to get these chicks in the mood, shake it, man. I need some ID. Looking for some chicks. Let's party. But tonight, they're about to face their greatest challenge. about 70s California stars a guy by the name of Michael Coppolo who we have had the pleasure of ta- uh, speaking with on the podcast here uh, I was actually over in that area whenever I went to California that's fucking looks like Santa Monica over there um, that's crump <laughs> yeah <laughs> it is um, movie's cool as fuck it's so much fun this is a very it's not a departure from Phantasm this is very Phantasm here. This is uh, a movie about uh, Doctor West and wheelchair fucker um, when they were younger. Um, also, this it really has a huge relation to just what I feel like our fans are and uh, and us as people. This movie is very relatable in a sense where you're just drink. That's me. I'm the Asian kid. I really am. I'm the fucking Asian kid in this movie. Yeah? No, nah, man. They let him out. He was telling me about these foreign radical chicks he's got down by the Frankie Avalon place. And they're from up north, and they're all hot to party. You hear that? Crunch Bros got some chicks. No, no shit. I guess. Fucking so like hoodies and no fat chicks. <laughs> no fat chicks, chicks yeah. What's the ratio, man? I heard there's only two of them. Bunk. Crunch Bros are fucking psycho, man. 
Oh, you are mixed chicks. Oh, not even, man. I don't want to end up like that Samoan dude. Oh, shit. You'd have to be a crazy, hard-up bastard to warm Crump's brother's chicks. Oh, By the way, the guy in the, uh, right there with the, the red, uh... <laughs> There's fucking tack. Fucking, uh, Stevie Rochelle from Tough is in this movie. Really? Yes. Wow. There's Clifton who's in... Uh, Everything. Yeah. But it must... Uh, extract. I fucking love him in Extract. Oh, he needs to do that Sears. <laughs> he needs to do that Sears the company. There's so much nut falling off. <laughs> yeah. And he's in uh, Boondock Saints 2. Um, there you see Michael Coppolo who plays Joe. And here's our main characters here is Joe and Hubs and... Bradford Tatum. played by Bradford Tatum. Love him. Uh, maybe we'll get him on one day. And then China uh, Cantor. Uh, they're in the, the blue torpedo. It's fucking awesome. There's Renee Ammon. Um, who Joe and him were pretty much in this film from the very beginning. There's Clifton Gonzalez. It's amazing. Um, yeah, from what uh, he said in the... There's Dave Grohl. <laughs> That's what I... <laughs> When I first saw this, I was like, Dave Grohl's in it? And I was like, oh. No, because I would Grohl. never watch this movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Nobody wants to see that fucking foo fuck. <laughs> foo fucker. <laughs> you can fuck off. Yeah. You can uh, fuck off. Yeah, cool things that he mentioned here. We won't reveal too much of it so you guys can actually hear it from him. But, uh, you know, early on with this film, you know, he said he had to audition. You know, Michael said he had to audition for this for like 20 some times because it's got. It went all over the place. First, it was like a college uh, thing that he went and auditioned for, and then it became, you know, an actual pitch for a Blue film. Torpedo. Blue Torpedo, baby, became a pitch for an actual film, and then that got picked up, and then he had to interview. You know, he had to do it again. But him and Renee both were in it since the beginning, so I thought that was really cool that they kind of stuck in with it. And they didn't get changed or anything. Uh, and so James McConian was. And every time I see that, and I don't mean this like disrespect, but every time that I used to see when I would get fucked up and watch this movie, yeah, you know, this goes back to when Matt was alive, you know, right? We'd watch this, and I, it always said, said James Kilvorkian, yeah, Kilvorkian, like that fucking doctor, yeah. I, I thought I was just <laughs> like, I'll do in the future. Oh, that yeah, whole doctor is the future. Let me see if uh, there's some subtitles because we definitely need it for this. I've never messed with this app outside of. Uh, okay, here it is. We need the subtitles, you know. We can't uh, have this whole film un- unmuted, so you guys hear the whole thing. You know, um, this film anyway, just to have and read the dialogue. The language in it is so perfect, and you know whether it's actual '70s slang or just something James made up for the film. Like it, it's perfect. It's just, its own world. It's so much fun. We had a great time talking with uh, Michael, who was. Joe in the film and uh, it's hard not to just have the dialogue for this film like up because I want to actually listen to a lot of this it's just so good but Michael does such a great job they're both very relatable characters Um, he's cool as shit in this yeah he's great and he's kind of like the more relatable person than Hubs because Hubs is more like the chaotic dude he's definitely you like if me and you drove around getting chicks in LA and partying this would be you and me too because I'd just be like more like come on man like what the hell's going on, man? Her top's not even off. <laughs> it's fucking awesome. Uh, we're watching this on Tubi. Now, Tubi is a free streaming app. I call it Tubby. Yeah, Tubby. It's Tubby. <laughs> There's me and you with the schnapps. The schnapster. <laughs> I just call it Tubby. <laughs> but that skank weed your brother had. <laughs> we'll just call it Comcast. <laughs> it's fucking ex, ex fuckery. It's fucking Tubby. And, uh, Comcast, he's tubby. Fucking come quiet, come quiet, tubby. Xfinity, X, it's X tubby. X, 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 Xfinity. It's triple X tubby. <laughs> well, it's the tubby Malibu app. Malibu Bobs. Yeah, it's the tubby app. Here's the fat chicks with the fucking hot dog eaters. You want to party with the buffalo chicks? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the, yeah, I just want to pork their grandmas too, man. <laughs> there we go. Hang on, we'll have to. I mean, there's there's too many funny stuff in here for me to not to do this. Seth Mama seat does. Just hanging. Anything going on? Got the top case box up at Petro Park. What else is new? Where's the party? There's a kegger up at Muldoon's parents' place in PV. Dude, I don't want to party with the Palace Freddy's Queebies, man. Hey, it's a party. Who's it gonna be? Just you guys? Yeah, we could. Play. Actually, ladies, we got a haul ass. Actually, yeah. ladies, we're running a little bit behind schedule. We got a haul ass. <laughs> Where are you guys going? You just 
beach cruising, man. You know how it is. Have fun. I mean, Hubs even looks like you. That's the craziest part. Is that it's seriously you and me in the 70s. <clears throat> it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Phantasm Torpedo. <laughs> I think it's badass. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we had such a good conversation with Michael, and um, it's very humbled with this film, and it's getting bigger and better, honestly. This film's. <laughs> it just, awesome. just scarred yeah. my tail love it. He goes, Big shit, man. Put, Put it another. another. <laughs> take this. It's a lady only. Yeah. Well, then he, he puts the fucking. That. Then he puts in blue ice. He's, like, oh, he's like, What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> Here we go. What the fuck is that? <laughs> For the Reaper, man. You're not playing that pussy shit in a blue torpedo, man. I told you. Yeah. Oh, boy, you know. Give a fuck if it's a blue oyster cold, man. It's a pussy song. It's BLC. How can it be pussy? Let me tell you something. Every band can title these one pussy songs, they can find them with a faggot song. Take it out. <laughs> fuck you, man. <laughs> fuck me? Ow. It's a pussy song. <laughs> Ted Nugent. <laughs> fucking tag, dude. <laughs> fucking tag, man. <laughs> he's, he's like, he's like, hack a loogie. Fuck you. Yeah. Hack a loogie. It's <laughs> him and fucking snot rag. He's <laughs> like, don't call me snot rag. He's like, alright, snot rag. Rewind it, he goes, it's just, <laughs> it's just that fucking pud. <laughs> I love the fucking... The dialogue in this movie is fucking... I told amazing. you, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> Watch this, oh, though. He goes... He goes... <laughs> fucking <like> pug. Pac-Man. <laughs> fucking pug. <laughs> like fucking Tac-Man. It's that fucking Ox 45. I love it. I need one of those t-shirts that he has. He's got the Ox 45 fucking raglan tee. I fucking need that shit. Check it out, man. It's Tac. <laughs> Tag that fucking pun. <laughs> <laughs> on him. Yo, that, like, the tag monster, that fucking pun. <laughs> Tacky fag. It even sounds like you and me. on him. You're like, you're like, look, it's wheelchair fucker. I'm like, yeah, yeah fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the other good parties. <laughs> It's like tack, you fag. <laughs> I gotta rewind it. Tack Meister, that fucking pun. There we go. Tack, you fag. Hey, man, I got some chicks, man. I got some chicks. That's fucking awesome. He's like the tech monster, that fucking pud. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, the, the writing for this is amazing. It's so well done. It's like... Can I tell you something crazy? The guy that produced this went on to do like Harry Potter movies. Really? Yeah, like it's in the... I just looked at it. We were, I didn't want to get into anything because I don't, you know, don't know shit about Harry Potter. But. Right. That's crazy. Um... Like, one of the guys that produced it apparently yeah. went on to do that. Like, the rest of them, I don't think really did anything. But Interesting. But, yeah, the uh, dialogue, and I know, Michael, you know, we were talking about uh, comfort films to watch, and he's mentioned Lord of the Rings and something he'll put on and kind of get in that mode of just comfort or he's cleaning his house or whatever. Um, but this, in a lot of ways, reminds me of that because, you know, J.R. Tolkien, I was talking about this earlier, actually, with my roommate, and, uh, you know, he was just like a... Yeah, you know, he went to Cambridge and shit. I think he was actually like a professor, like J.R. Tolkien was, and he was very fluent in like languages. And he was just obsessed with it. So when he came up with his own fucking languages for Lord of the Rings, like it made sense. But this movie has its own fucking slang and language, and that's not easy to do and pull off. Like a lot of movies that are made in the '80s, you know, they have like '80s slang and they have their own kind of like, um. You know, some of them have their own slang, but this kind of brings it to a whole new level. Like, everything they do in this is slang, but it doesn't make you feel like it's just the 70s. Like, it makes you feel like it's its own thing. It's really cool. So, uh, we talk about that. 
He's eating that fucking burrito. <laughs> I never noticed that when I watched it before. <laughs> Tax eating that burrito they fucking threw back there. It's from like three days ago. It's fucking hilarious. But, um... Oh, this film is great. You know, 94. Uh, it makes you want to go back and, uh, you know, do this shit. Like, just go on a fucking drive, listen to music, and look for parties, and go to L.A., get fucked up, you know. Um, which Michael said this was in the San Fernando Valley, which is about about 30 minutes outside of L.A., and that's where he was already at, so, you know, didn't take him much to come out here and film this movie. Um it's also a, a fun Ghostbusters nod, you know, from Ghostbusters 2, where he's, uh, he's like, you know, Bill Murray's fucking talking shit to Vigo, and he's like, he's like, only a, uh, only a Carpathian will come back to life now and choose New York. Tasty pick, bonehead. If you had brain one in that huge melon on top of your neck, you'd be living the sweet life. In, San, in Southern California's beautiful San Fernando Valley. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. <laughs> oh, this is uh, Crump's brother. Yeah. It's fucking hilarious. Or that's Crump. His brother's that big motherfucker that right. comes out later. It's like his chicks or whatever. Even though they're not, like, you find out yeah, later. Yeah, Crump's the guy I told you at the beginning of the film. Yeah. That's his brother. That gets hitched. He's literally hitchhiker. credited as Crump's brother. Yeah, he's hitchhiked or whatever. They're even calling that. Let's go see Crump's brother. Yeah, get a pack of Reds, and then he's like trying to get something else. He's like, "All right, how about this and a pack of Reds?" Can't remember. He just said it a second ago, but no, this movie's like a perfect, you know, just uh, film about two friends that are just trying to fucking cruise around, find a party to go to, and hang out, and, and get chicks really, and then. You find about these two chicks from up north, and they're like, "That's they're like, all right, this is where we're gonna party at." And they're just trying to get the the right ratio and all that. You know, it's it's really cool and it's very relatable. And uh, we had, you know, this is very special to us. We haven't done anything really like this before, but I think it still fits in the phantasm realm, and it's one of the doctor's favorite films, and. It is. He introduced it to me uh, a few weeks ago from this app, and I loved it. And we uh, got things together to get Michael on, and I really did it as a you made that as a awesome. as a thank, thank you to the doctor, and really because I wanted to talk to him. Because I instantly just this film is something I want to keep watching. Like it's incredible. Like I, it's it's fucking hilarious. It's like nonstop funny, and it's and it it really honestly is scary because it's like me and the doctor. It's fucking weird, but it's cool. You know, the whole movie is like hard to not think of it as like us fucking driving around doing our thing but not as bad we don't really you know Doctor's not an asshole like Hubs is in the film but it's uh, very subtle it's not like uh, Hubs is more of a kind of an asshole but it's funny you know Doctor's not like a direct uh, directly like Hubs but it's still cool it's well no more, I mean I'm kind of like that but not to me when I was younger though. I was very much like that yeah not to me though like we didn't have like a no, but that's why I was saying that it's... But it is, like... It is very much like... As the, far as the polar fucker. extremes, I'm definitely more of the chill dude that's, like, whatever. No, no, totally. And that, and so is Jens, and I yeah. think that's... But, but I do, you know... And you're more definitely like him, but you're not as shitty. Well, I mean, <laughs> I was like that as a kid, though. Yeah. Yeah, the black long mop, it's funny. It's just funny. Long black mop. It's funny anyway. That's the way they do all of it. Oh, yeah. But uh, we had a fun time, and it was very just, I don't know, it was very cool. Something that I just got introduced to, and then, you know, we're, we're just talking to the, you know, Joe from the goddamn film. It's awesome. And uh, it's just a really great time, and this movie's just fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Fuck you, fucking worms. God, this is fucking funny. <laughs> Joe, was I fucking eyeballing at you again, man? Do the same shit to you. 
still ain't cool. Fuck, man, we got checks! We're gonna fuck them doggy style and shit in their parents' van! <laughs> We're going to fuck them doggy style and shit in their parents' bed. That's awesome. <laughs> I forgot. The only thing about this app I never mentioned, because I mentioned it on like three fucking episodes now. But uh, it's, they have it, ads, but they're like six seconds. They're ads. short, and they're for booze, a lot of them. And honestly, the, it's the, true. The, the, movies un, the movies are still unedited. Normally, if there's commercials, Vincent, shit's edited. Vincent is truly hard seltzer. Oh, okay, well. It's truly hard seltzer. What's the... Uh, Never mind, I won't, I won't make that joke here. But it's funny. That's just a very typical uh, drink. I don't know. I'm not into the really. I just like beer and alcohol, but a lot of people like the seltzer stuff right now, and I just don't. I don't even really like seltzer. I think it's gross. So if you combine it with alcohol, it just doesn't. It's like a double. It's a double no thank you to do the seltzer thing. I don't know. Yeah, you know, like that white claw shit. It just tastes like asshole. And then they got the that truly seltzer. I don't know. I don't know what the craze is with the seltzer beer, like seltzer whatever shit. Now I don't get it. You know what I'm talking about? The seltzer, yeah, I, alcohol you know, shit, like the wine cooler. I don't know. Well, I mean, here's my thing. I, I'm I like seltzer water, but the thing with it is, I'm I'm scared mixing it with alcohol would just give me a hangover. You know, it doesn't taste. Good. I think it would just make me. Well, it probably I haven't tried it. It tastes awful. Well, seltzer water does taste awful. Right. When you combine it with alcohol, that also tastes awful. It's just like... It does sound like a bad combination. Yes. I don't know why people are just like, yeah, seltzer. It's just fucking weird. I don't know. It's a huge thing right now. I don't know if they just started coming up with it or like... (laughs) Puts out the cigarette and have a nice day face. Ah, I fucking love this. They finally get to the apartment with the chicks. And here's... uh, Renee, who's was uh, Lainey, his actual character name in the film. Oh well, yeah, she was through the whole making of this. Like she was one of the main people that was stuck in it from the beginning. So I thought that was cool that you know she was in this. Uh, I'm Hubs, and this is my buddy Joe. Hey. Oh, we heard you guys wanted a party. Oh yeah, where'd you hear that? From Tack. Who's Tack? <laughs> Just some dude. <laughs> you heard it from Crust Brother? You know, down at the beach? You guys got in love? Um, no. You guys got me crank? Woo. No. Got any nudes? He's trying to really party. Well, what kind of party is this going to be? We got alcohol, man. What, like some Annie Green Springs? Yeah, we got the shit extra. Check it out. <laughs> Bitchin'. Well, you don't take schnapps to Rhea? Yeah, like when I was in seventh grade. So what do you drink these days? 151. Cool. Can't you guys score something like that? Bacardi. Sure, baby, whatever you want. Oh, yeah? That stuff makes me crazy. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> Don't let me down now, boys. We had a cool moment with this, uh, the part with uh, the, the liquor store thing. So like, come on, snot those. rag. Nope, it's good. Liquor world. This this part's so fucking amazing. Just this is a really good moment. Trump's brother beat the shit out of us. Get this look. <laughs> The Samoan dude that t- tangled with Crumb's brother. <laughs> my, my Look at him, he's like, God damn it. It's uh, Taylor Negron that we're going to see here in a minute. And uh, Are we back on? Yeah. Sweet. There he is. I Man, this is probably one of my favorite scenes is, is him. What's up, I'm super freak? Laughing my balls off. <laughs> he's just the disco thing. <laughs> he's... <laughs> This dude's gonna card me, man. This fucking guy makes 275 an hour, man. You think he gives a shit? Come on. Disco Inferno. Yeah. Taylor Negron. 151. 
Hey, the boogie with the boxes tonight. Ain't hot as bro. Do the landing green spreads. What movie scene that you and I love? I don't think so. I thought you were asking me. You I know. Because I have a special. Yeah, you know, like I think more than one thing that I've seen. He's in, he's in Fast Times. Put him on the floor. Do the hassle. Put it's him the in the pizza guy. Potato. Last Boy Scout. Oh yeah, he was the guy who's like, and I can't figure out which one of you looks like my dick. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> he's in Biodome too. Oh yeah, he's like a... Russell, yeah. and uh, He just puts his nose... Let's see, uh, Easy Money. I love the fucking cock, and that guy rules. He is awesome. Um, you have to actually let me hear this part. Yeah, Milo in Last Boy Scout. He's in Stuart Little. Uh, Angels in the Outfield. Yeah, give us some volume on this. Exactly, man. Shit. Flintstones, Viva, uh, Viva Rock Vegas. <laughs> Back here. Hey, Officer Dean, how's it going, man? You two miners wouldn't be trying to purchase alcoholic beverages now, would you? Come on, man, you know us better than that. Yeah, I do. We're still looking for the punks who knocked over the liquor warehouse on Crenshaw. Know anything about that? We don't know nothing about the Stone Ox 45, man. Hey, man, just because we got along here, you think we're criminals. You guys think I didn't you want to taste a beer when I was your age? Hell, they used to you call me I didn't want to Dixie Cup D. I was your age. <laughs> Hell. They used to call me Dixie Cup Dean. Kevin Kilner. They got rules. Does um, rule. <clears throat> that's cool. So he was in Tales from the yeah. Crypt. Uh, you guys stay out of trouble. Alright? So this movie was originally supposed to be a Disney movie. How cool is that? It was supposed to be like Hollywood. <clears throat> okay. It is, but they wanted way too much shit on it, so they were like, no, we can't do this. They wanted to pretty much dumb the whole movie down. Uh, Cory can go home and spank it with his greasy grandpappy. I'm getting laid. <laughs> Murder, she wrote. He was in... Mm. Home Alone. Wow, he was in Home Alone 3. I didn't even think of that. He's in Fraser. Um, Welcome to the Hanky. Are you serious? Yeah. He the was Officer on, Dean? Yeah, he's on one episode. Uh, American Pie 2. That's where I've it's seen him. Right. He was the dad and fucking... See, in uh, American yeah. Pie 2 that walks in. They used to call me Dixie Cup Dean. <laughs> Jeez, this, this came out the same year as Dazed and Confused. Yeah. You'd think you always, I always think that Dazed and Confused came out in the 80s, but it didn't. This is just a better fucking movie. It is. Yeah. It's more relatable. <laughs> Dazed and Confused is cool, but I think this is just a better film. Well, that one's very specific to, like, just straight up high school and the life well, of high school. Well, Richard Linklater's high movies are are good you know he does I like several of his movies but I yeah. it's like I told Joe like Joe <laughs> Michael you know from there I'm calling his character's name but anyway it's like I told him it's like this movie's just more relatable to me it just yeah. is and like another thing is like in the 90s you could still make an authentic looking 70s comedy nowadays you can't really do that anymore yeah, it's everything's true. too HD and cleaned things, up. Things are too advanced now, and and somebody on set probably pulls out their phone. And it's like, hey, hey, don't he just do smoke that. that bicycle. I know. He's going to get chicks, man. Like I remember when I was at two thousand five, like MTV, MTV had this show called Seventies House. And that's like, Jill. So that's the other chick. So she's like everyone had to act like it was. She's the 70s. I love your that guy you like. He's like she's ugly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. You know, she's and then, not, then, then yeah. he, and then Joe gets in trouble with her because he's just like, "Oh man, she's not too bad. I wouldn't kick her out of bed." Yeah. And then she locks him outside. <laughs> uh, now I will tell you something to look for in this movie. He was talking about stuff. I didn't really want to go into this because it sounded like he was friends with her. But I will say this on this podcast. <clears throat> if you're hearing this, sorry, but I wanted to say this too. But I thought it was a little weird. But anyway. There is literally a scene in this at the pool, you know, right before the monkey thing, whatever, when she takes her uh, shorts off yeah. and it's showing like her bikini. You mm-hmm. can see them big leops. <laughs> big leops. Yeah. And I'm not talking about the ones on her face. Mm. That's a pussy cape, son. <laughs> I call so it a bird. That's bird. what I like. That's a, like. that's a. <clears throat> that, that's an invitation for West Tongue. <laughs> <laughs> And then my sausage. 
<laughs> your Cuban sausage. It is. It's a, it's a hot dog bun for the sausage. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask about this, but I didn't think about it, the, the actual Box 45 thing. You know what they're doing with that boot? That's got to be Sunny D. You can tell about It is. Oh, yeah. It's a screwdriver with that Bacardi. Ooh. Uh, Bacardi's nasty. It is. Um, the Ox 45 thing, a script originally called for them to drink Colt 45, but Colt 45 wouldn't allow it because they refused to endorse underage drinking. So they're like, fuck it, we're going to call it Ox 45. <laughs> That's why they actually it's made amazing. merch for it. Yeah, it is awesome. <laughs> wow. No, but like I like this movie though, like I thought she was I thought she was, you know, kind of attractive. But my favorite part though was like I said, when we get to that scene, um, for those at home if you want to stop it on, I'll tell you where it's at. That way you all can enjoy the see that cape. <laughs> it's not that too far from cape. here, it's when they go to that party. It's the covered cape. Yeah. Um Actually, I mean, actually this, this is hilarious right here. He's just like, big shit, Joe. Now enough about you, Joe. I love this. Yeah. Big whoop. Oh, man, it was rad. I mean, they picked me out of the whole crowd. It was right when they were doing the story. Right here, listen. You feel the Reaper? It was a rush. Yeah, it was delicious. Let it set up like a fucking Christmas tree. But enough about you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everything just got done. Oh, this is where he talks about the... And yeah, Colin, 2001... I fucking love that. He's just like, yeah, let us have like a fucking Christmas tree, but I have to have you, Joe. Man. It's like, <laughs> just, just floating. It was kind of like that, that big pig at the Floyd show, but, I mean. This was real. This was real. <laughs> that reminds me of Mondo Man, yeah. Yeah. Who's that? Just some dude. Mondo Man. Some dude. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Who's Mondo Man? Oh, he's just some dude. <laughs> I love that it's just like a parallel. They both, they both in their circles do that. Like they'll be like, "Ah, it's just some dude," and then the chicks will be like, "Ah, it's just some dude." Like, Mention my name and you get a good seat. <laughs> Have you seen I'm be quoting this damn thing? I love this fucking movie. Let's I love see. that he goes, "Hey, Hubs, who the fuck is Mondo Man?" He's like, "Who the fuck cares?" <laughs> <It's> fucking awesome. <laughs> She's so cherry, man. <laughs> She's like, she's so hot for me, man. He goes, I didn't know that the, the, yeah, the videotape tagline for this was better than Dazed and Confused, since it was the first 70s stoner film to come out the year earlier. So they actually had it that way, you know. <laughs> Don't you think that chubby guy looks like Richie Blackmore? <laughs> That's fucking awesome. <laughs> uh... I mean, this is... He's a total whacker. Yeah, a total <laughs> whacker. What's a whacker? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. We're going to have to get, like, a, a, a translation Jake book Reaper on this. Jake me about the whacker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like, That's what? what you got. You didn't get an interview. You got the whacker. <laughs> you got the sorry, I'm you busy. penis whacker. <laughs> I'm going to have to reschedule. I'm horny. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, they're probably they're probably down there right now urinating in the ice in the ice box <laughs> or in the ice tray, and there they are fucking urinating in the ice tray. Typical dude shit. I used to fuck with people stuff like that. Not as bad. I wouldn't pee on shit. I'm not fucking gross. But I love he just took them fucking barbecue Pringles. <laughs> That's fucking amazing. <laughs> that another thing dates this guy's just straight off the store shelf. Yeah. <laughs> Look, he's doing that. Uh, I do. Did you not yeah. see him doing it? I totally do that all the time. He's like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, if, this house though looks like a real house, like a yeah. like somebody already did live there. Fucking tack man. Oh, this is too good. You just have to unmute this like every like two minutes. It's so funny. Bring on the bitches. <laughs> Can I get you guys anything? This is cool. <laughs> are there any other chicks here? Or are you the only one? Mm-hmm. Hey, Tack! Man, this is a closed party, man. Fuck you, worm! So you know these guys? Yeah, sort of. Deal with this. Joe, how's it going? You know <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Hey, bring on the bitches! <laughs> Here I come, Brent. Oh, shit, man. I'm going to scorch my shorts. <laughs> fucking tack, man. That's my fucking, fucking, fucking tack, man. Would you ladies excuse me a sec? 
To be the <laughs> fucking Maldoon part. God damn. We gotta unmute that yeah. when they fucking get there. Jake Busey. Which is so cool because, uh, you know, not get too much away on Michael's interview we did, but, uh, you know, he, he's he got to work with Gary and, and Jake Busey, so it's pretty awesome to have that, that fucking milestone and be able to do that in your career. It's pretty, pretty tight. You know, I hated yeah. to just stick with some of those movies that I've, I mean, those movies are great. Like, I love mm-hmm. those movies, man. He's in all that shit. It's fucking awesome. Oh yeah, I hate Palace Verdes. They just fucking park their car in the middle of the goddamn road. It's just so funny. This whole thing's fucking hilarious. Right here in a second, tax gonna be like, "Get you some." <laughs> just read. For Maybe the veil. <laughs> just read for you. He's gonna be like, "Get you some," because <laughs> he sees these people making out. Yeah. It's about to come up. All right, get you some. <laughs> oh yeah, <all> right. <laughs> okay, go for the unmute because this is the part. Here we go. Here's hilarious. here's Jake Busey in the Stone Age right here. Yeah, he's like a rich a rich boy. Hey, old dude, it's cool, man. Oh, it ain't cool, Connolly. I didn't buy beer for a bunch of you burnouts to come here and drink. Why don't you go party with your own kind? And you just let our chicks in. Yeah, it's ladies' night. <laughs> <laughs> we want to drink nothing, man. Yeah, man. We just want to party. Yeah, assholes, let us in. <laughs> 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 Fuck you, Muldoon. Fucking tag. Yeah, assholes, let us in. Fucking amazing. Me, it's Muldoon. I hate to ask you to do goddamn fucking kills me. He's like, yeah, assholes, let us in. He just fucking starts cruising in later and he's shoving like 20 feet. Shut up. That's way far back. It's okay, it's okay. I'm trying to watch the whole movie over again. Oh, god damn it. Because <laughs> he got fucking smoked again. <laughs> I mean, he gets fucking drilled. It's pretty good. Oh my god, this movie's so good. <laughs> I fucking love it. It's just an hour and 30 minutes of bliss. It's fucking amazing. Yeah, assholes, let us in. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, it's fucking tack, man. Fuck you, Muldoon. <laughs> Muldoon, that's fuck a it, funny name. Fucking tack. Right in. Tack, man. <laughs> Me, it's Muldoon. Let's kick his rich boy ass. Fuck man, I would. If you didn't have such massive upper body strength. Let's <laughs> the chicks anyway, man. We were styling back in the town. You dig me back there. I wasn't for you and this fag me and Joe. Don't talk head tack. Fuck you. Fuck me? Come on, guys. Can we just get along? Oh, fuck this. Fuck <laughs> I'm telling you. The part that fucking kills me back there, he's just like... He just walks like, right in. Yeah, so let us in. And he shoves him like 20 feet. It's and like, he's like, fuck you, dude. dude. <laughs> fucking amazing. <laughs> oh, here's an oar if you want to get that for the audio. Oh, yeah. Here's me again. I'm the Asian kid. Man, he's biting your ass. That you can get in the way, man. She's too red. Man, check it out. Oh! oh! <laughs> that guy's more me. I want to buy that fucking hoodie for Chuck. Every time we did back to suspend as a podcast. Hey, do 
guys hear my grumpy brother, man? He's got these fine yeah. chicks, man. No, man, you're nothing like that. What's the ratio here, man? It's like 35 to 3 out here. Inside my piece of better numbers. Nice. Rock and roll. There's a buttload of fine Bettys in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> they all that guy with the fucking hat turned backwards is the best. <laughs> like 30 guys, 30 guys that can't call this one chick. <laughs> fucking bogarting a keg. <laughs> so fucking funny. Oh man. There's a hot dog chicks. That's Stevie Rochelle from Tough right there too. The dude with the, uh, oh yeah. Want the long hair? Yep. Nice. Did I ever say that ends? Hmm? That's Stevie Rochelle from Tough. Uh, is in this movie too. <clears throat> oh shit! What was the other? <laughs> he just flipped him off. <laughs> just look at that shit. <laughs> I wonder if he had a Muldoon photo when we were there. I bet he did. It's fucking awesome. <clears throat> Trying to see what else uh, that one dude was in. By the way, you got everybody listening, if you can't find this movie to watch uh, streaming, you can get it on DVD still from Amazon. It's like 12 bucks. So. Yep, or get the 2B app, which brought to my attention with a right. wheelchair fucker here. It's on, uh, you can get it on the PlayStation app. It's uh, 2B. Which is cool, yeah. T-U-B-I or well. Tubby. We'll call it Tubby or Chubby. It's on there. It's because of the, the Asian... If you, want to get, if you want to be artistic with it, you call it 2Buy. 2Buy. And here's the bar. Uh, yeah, Joe cool. is ditching the party with uh, Laney here. And he's about to try to smoke pot with her, even though it's like some ditch weed. And, here comes Officer Dean. Yeah. You guys didn't think I wanted a taste of beer yeah. when I was a kid? Hell. That's why they call me Dixie Cup Dean. It's amazing. But uh, These Honda ads are creepy. I know. This, the character of Mike Dick... Which Look is, at that guy. I mean, it's just, <laughs> which was the, the, it was the doing, Asian kid. His name was Art. Doing the journey. Look, they're doing the. Bah, bah, remember the bah, bah, remember bah, bah, the Hulu Mazda ads. Now and forever. It was like these feel alive. God, yeah, those are so fucking over dramatic. The the Asian kid's name is Art Chuda. What is it? Uh, Chudabala. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, but he's done a lot of TV stuff. He was in an episode of uh, Babylon 5, which I think that's pretty interesting. I love Babylon 5. Yeah, he was Private mm-hmm. Yang. <clears throat> Life with Louie. I forgot about that show. That's amazing. Uh, he was Guzman and Walker, Texas Ranger on an episode. He was in Family Matters, NYPD Blue. Uh, <laughs> the Pretender, Chicago Hope. Oh, he was in two episodes of Deep Space Nine. Yes. He was uh, Lieutenant Hector Alario. And Valiant Cadet. What season? From 98 to 99. Oh, that's a late one. Deep Space Nine. It's probably like season Party's six or up. seven. He was in an episode of uh, Nash Bridges. That's pretty awesome. Strange World, ER, Hard Luck, Jag, Six Feet Under, West Wing. I love all these people running on this party because their bases suck. What the fuck? He was in that movie Crash. He's like all the stoner guys are trying to grab those chicks. He was in the Dragnet, More of the Worlds. Numbers, CSI, Alias, Boston Legal. Said he was he did work on the Command and Conquer Three Tiberium Wars, which is badass. I guess he did some kind of mocap work or voiceover work for that. And he was Doctor Michael A. Kondo in House, so that's cool too. And he did a, the last thing he did was the Great Alaskan Race, which is some kind of a movie, I guess that he was. Uh, sweet. Had some kind of role in That's his most recent thing he did, so he's still he's still kicking with us too. <clears throat> like, look at all this stuff. Now I want to tell everybody watching at home or listening at home, rather. Hopefully, watching the movie, but listening at home. Yeah, we encourage you guys to actually <clears throat> watch it with us, as if we're, you know, you're running commentary as you're just kind of hanging out watching the movie, or you know, maybe you're you're about to have the reveal of that luscious cape. 
It's the Doctor West special if you ever needed a visual of it. There it is, 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 there it is. The cape. Did you see it? Oh, yeah. Go back and pause the cape. (laughs) I mean, it's seriously right there. I used to whack it for this. That's fantastic. Just the cape. Yeah. It's the idea of getting me mentally hot for the cape. As a superhero needs his cape. The cape cod. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't even think of it before I said it, the actual... But yeah. Wow. (laughs) Hopefully he doesn't hear this when we talk about that chick's cape, but whatever. (laughs) Can't help it, you know? The cape is the cape. The party's over. We have reports of minors drinking alcohol and illegal urination in your neighbor's pool. (laughs) It's police time. Yep, so the police are there, and there's Stevie Rochelle again from Tough, and he's, I don't know, it's kind of weird seeing him in this movie, now that I know that he's in it, but, I mean, I knew he was in it, but it's just weird, actually, that's not it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's it. I got it queued up now. There is no active call. What was that? Did you so hear there's that? There's no active call. What is that? I don't know. I think that was my security system being weird. I was like, Corey, I'm now going to start talking to you. That's fucking weird. I'm ready to see that cape again. <clears throat> Let me see that pussy cape. You need the cape like on a Doctor Strange where he just like snapped his fingers and it fucking <laughs> flies up to him. <laughs> Same time, bring me that cape. I mean, look at it. It is seriously impressive. Yeah. It's big, too. You can tell she's got them. <laughs> I'm serious. It's fucking rad. I can't think of this in any other movie where it's got... The, I mean, it's not a porn. There we go. It's just a straight up... <laughs> <laughs> Good timing. Yeah. Check this out. I did check it out. Man. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people don't know what they're getting into when they tune into Phantasm, but it's... Uh, we're just a very yeah. kooky bunch here. Mm-hmm. But, well, you know, it's it's all good fun, you know. Renee's a cool chick, you know. The character, it's fun, you know. It's another thing, it's, you know. <laughs> not Joe's fucking. You, you those need, goddamn boxers. You need those, too. The fucking Ox 45. You have the Ox Indies. boxers. Ox boxes. It's fucking hilarious. You know, that's the other relatable thing. It's hard to, like, your idea of, like, trying to hang out with a chick. You think, well, she's in a bikini. We're already in the hot tub. I'm in my boxers. Things are just going to kind of happen as they happen. But, you know, you figure out, you know, especially if you got another dude that's competing with the same chick, you know, he's going to have a different approach to do it. So, like, you know, I've seen that shit happen before. I've had situations where I'm with some chick and then... One of my friends comes in and fucking steals her. I've had it happen. It fucking sucks. <clears throat> That's why this is relatable. We've all been in this situation where the girl we're trying to get with. and You know, sometimes you <laughs> realize you don't have enough fucking time to chill and get to know each other. <laughs> oh, this is good. Well, this is another... I'm not going to talk about any of this, but there was a fun conversation about this scene with uh, that Michael talks about in this. Um, it's it's actually one of the best parts of the interview. Honestly, that was so much fun to talk about. Is this this uh, pool scene? So here we go. There's a. It'll be a minute. You know, Hubs is like, man, she doesn't even have her top off. It's done. <laughs> she fucking dunks her head. <laughs> Come here. What? I'm 
literally wet as a fountain. Mm-hmm. Damn it, you asshole. Yeah, it's just instant. <laughs> Fucking Joe's pissed off. Here we go. This is fucking Joe's idea. That's the funniest part. All I'm gonna say about it. <laughs> I feel like I asked some pretty cool questions. Yeah, it was fun. I, I tried to ask specific things that I liked. This was one of those. Like, yeah. Fucking hmm. <laughs> lips. Albano. Yeah. Punks. You punks? Damn Cindy Lauper video. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, punk. Come on, punk. Oh. <laughs> Fucking punks on, motherfucker. He actually just kind of dropped his ass in the pool. That's pretty funny. That's actually, um... God, who the fuck is that? Holy shit, there's no way. Huh? What? Oh, that's a different guy. There's actually... <laughs> one of the guzzlers, his real name's Danny McBride, but it's not the same one. That's kind of funny. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Um, God, I'm trying to find this dude. Anyway, it's funny. It, I hate fucking rushing out of a pool and not being able to do shit. And all wet and stuff. It was just an awkward scene. What? Where it's like to relate to it, where you know, then you be comfortable with a chick, and they're like, "No, you gotta leave," and then you just feel like a. Creep. I think it's funny. You know, it's funny in the movie, but to relate to it, where it's happening, you're just like, "Fuck." Or it's like you feel like a fucking creeper. I love this. She's like, "Keep your hand," and then he the comes like, He's like, "All right, shit." <laughs> She's got a fucking foot on him. It's like, all right, all right. Oh, man. You know the uh, Frankie Avalon thing? Mm-hmm. You know who that was supposed to be? And I wish I'd known this would ask about. It was William Shatner. That's who was supposed to be the cameo for that. Fuck. <laughs> he was probably filming something. It was 94. I don't know what it was, but... I can guess. You think that I didn't want to drink a bunch of beer and piss in somebody's pool when I was your age? Hell. They used to call me Quick Dick Dean. <laughs> There's a lot of good one liners in this. I knew that was that guy. That <clears throat> that fucking dude that comes out of the pool with the baseball bat. He's in fucking From Dust Till Dawn. That's awesome. Yeah. I knew it. He was, uh... I'm trying to remember which part he's in. He's one of the fucking vampire dudes. But yeah, I knew I recognized him. He's in the Heartbreak Kid, too. I don't think he's the one that gets stabbed in the heart with a pencil. He's one of those dudes. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've seen From Dust Till Dawn, but... <clears throat> no fat chicks. That guy's amazing. I, I think that's the guy that's name. His name is <clears throat> Danny McBride. I wanted to ask him about that. It's like, maybe hang out sometime we were in L.A. Corey and I'll take you down to Dirty Dogs. <laughs> the lap dance. The Polka Palace. Oh, this is a crump or whatever. This is pretty funny, actually. Yeah. Beat some fucking accordion player's ass. It's so fucking funny. I love this. <laughs> hey, dude, lay off those. <laughs> He's fucking playing penguin with her tits. <laughs> and then there's that too. Ah, Mr. Skinless. Well, Mr. Skinless. Uh, 
What part are we at here? It's about roughly at, right at 47 minutes of the film. We got some uh, some uh, bare rack, and then it just continues on here and there and then during the scene. So just keep on watching. You got the panty throw. And there's me in real life at a party. I'm just sitting in the fucking living room. <laughs> Somebody doesn't give a shit that I'm there. <laughs> Can't tell you how many times that's happened. But that's what makes this movie funny. Is that it's like you've been in those situations. It's just you can look back and laugh on it. You know. Nine times out of ten, if I was with a friend of mine, we go do a similar thing like this film. Like we're gonna go get a party and find these chicks. I mean, I end up at night I sit in the living room <clears throat> and then that too I'd have to be the one to tell them let's go and I have to interrupt them porking <clears throat> I've had to be that person a million times where it's like get them out of here it's like god damn it <clears throat> at first it's fucking funny because he's about to get fucking Hubs is about to get the fucking BJ and <laughs> he's got gives him the thumb up <laughs> I've had that bromant too in, in real life Fuck <laughs> Joe. What's he doing here? <laughs> the guy's a perv. It's like, I mean, you got your... What's going on, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> got your rack hanging out. I can't just not look at it. Yeah. So she's really pissed. Man, you had your chance. Blew it. Pay the price, man. You're gonna jump on the grenade. <laughs> She's all over my case. So deal with it, man. Come on. I thought you were my bro. I'd do the same for you, man. Just take the edge off. Joy, I think I'm fucking like gallon and a half. Just a circumstance, man. You know, whatever. Bye. Bye. Later. It's funny because like he's just got to get that other chick going, and he doesn't. You know, he doesn't want to feel like a fucking sleaze because he was with her. She's not like as hot or whatever. You know, it's kind of sad, but she's not really that bad looking. I like that where it says <laughs> no guzzlers. This is my favorite part of the movie right here. Here, it's down. Shut up and go for it, Snot Rat! Those aren't talls! <laughs> I fucking love this. You said talls, those aren't talls. Yeah, this movie would have. I, I don't think. The VOC's perfect. The Led Zeppelin would have ruined this. Oh, yeah. Honestly, very glad that you know. We obviously didn't know about the Led Zeppelin thing instead of the Blue Oyster Cult stuff, but I think it stuck more with the Blue Oyster Cult shit. I think it's awesome they were cool with this movie too, because obviously I don't think they tried to get Zeppelin, but they kind of knew they, right, well, they agreed to it. Yeah, it's strange. And so it's then it was more or less, uh, you know, them just straight up asking Blue Oyster Cult, I guess, and them agreeing to do it. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, he's getting fucking beat up by everybody in this film, you know. Fucking Tack and <laughs> this chick and Laney beats him up and even Hubs. <laughs> Poor dude, you know. But he's like the he's the most human part of the film, that's why I love him so much, you know. The character of Joe. Oh, Joe. He's like the one with the conscience and he's he's struggling with his inner conscience, you know, the the eye from the Blue Oyster Cult show and I don't know. He gets like knocked down this whole film, but it's it's the most human portrayal of somebody I think, as far as just like a a dude in this situation. Because I've been in the, these situations, you know. 
Mine haven't been beat up as much as him, but you know. As far as... <laughs> <laughs> He's beating himself up. Yeah, just falling over a rock and stuff. Just being clumsy and just... Whatever. Being normal and not... Being this fucking, you know... He's the opposite of hubs, for sure. That's why they they get along, and he's like the extreme to him. And he's just trying to fucking hang out, you know. It's like he wants to be like, be with hubs and be cool, too, but also he's, he's just down to just fucking chill. He doesn't want to, like, go 100%. He'd rather, right. He'd rather Ugh. just fucking hang out. I think it's cool. I'll see if <clears throat> what Clifton Collins has going on now. He's uh, he's in he's probably very successful. I mean, he's pretty successful. He's been uh, in Westworld. That's what he's been doing. <clears throat> which you know, I saw him in Extract, which is great, and um, I love him and uh, Boondock Saints too. He was in Capote. I didn't know that. <clears throat> well, he's got a bunch of stuff. I guess he's in that newer Veronica Mars show. He's in that. <clears throat> he's in that new Tarantino movie. He's in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That's hilarious. His name is Ernesto the Mexican Vaquero. <laughs> in that Tarantino film. <coughs> so you can look for Tack in that, folks. Uh, I am hungry. Yeah, Lawrence in Westworld. Uh, he's a bus driver in Super Troopers too. I've heard that movie's awful, but <laughs> that's what this car is. Those are hits the fan right here. <laughs> Where's the one that I had earlier? I had a really good one. He's in uh, Ballers. Did you know that? Yeah, I knew he was in one season of it. Maximo Gomez. He's in seven episodes. Um, what season was that? It doesn't say. He's got some new stuff coming out. Painted Beauty. I don't know if that's already out. Running with the Devil. Breaking News in Yuba County. Comes out in 2020. And then after Yang, he's a film he's currently... I feel like he works, works a lot, though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pretty badass. Oh shit! Oh fuck! It's been a long one tonight. This is about done. This ain't got much left. Yeah. It's about to hit the fan. How much does this have left? Uh, maybe. I would say maybe fifteen minutes. Yeah, it's getting down to it. Now he was uh, I fucking love this movie we have Michael talking <clears throat> about his next film coming out called Phone Book which actually sounds really good actually it sounds hilarious and uh, he'll talk about that on the, on the interview there I'm trying to see what else uh, Stoop did mm. nice I actually like the uh, artwork of this movie. I'm trying to pull up the actual thing here. Full summary of it: a phone book starring Michael Coplo, lazy, bored, unemployed Fred, which is played by Michael, spends time at home sprawled on a sofa, drinking beer, eating popcorn, watching endless TV, until one day his television set breaks. Lost and downhearted by it, he tosses and turns up. Down and sideways on a sofa and finds an old personal phone book underneath. He starts calling calling old contacts that bring him into different situations. His calls will change directly or indirectly the situations and his own too. Like a trans, transcendental experience. Basically, in his words, he's just calling random people in the phone book and fucking with them. <clears throat> it turns into a whole big thing. But it should be coming out here soon. October 18th, so that's when that comes out. Oh, mute this, this is funny shit. Oh, yeah, I hear so. Like you're the one to talk, Joe. You're the worm. 
Man, they hate your chicks anyway, man. You don't have to talk shit to them. Fuck you, man. I gotta get laid like any other dude. Yeah, but you don't have to be such a dick, man. What happened to you, Tack? I mean, you used to be an all right dude. Fine chicks don't even talk to me. They all think I'm gross. You think any fine chicks gonna wanna talk to a crater, crater face? face. Hey, man. This is the part I was telling about okay. a while. What am I supposed to do? Wait till I'm 30 to get laid? Well, maybe you can meet a chick, you know, with an acne problem too. You guys want something to come? Fuck you, man. I don't want no chick with chicks. I want fine chicks. You gotta come out sometime. I fucking love that where he's just like, maybe, maybe you can find a chick with an acne problem too. <laughs> I don't want no chick with fucking zits. <laughs> I want fine chicks. Who gets just stuck on you? Gotta come out sometime, worm. And it's not on to that. <laughs> <laughs> look, it's still stuck there. Look. Yeah, that's a... Try this medicine. You gotta come out sometime, worm. <laughs> <laughs> Here, this will cure your depression. You gotta come out sometime, worm. That's fucking good. Look, it's a cough, and you gotta come out sometime, worm. <laughs> Are you seeing this? Yeah, it's still on there. I see now we got the subtitles on and. Ew. That's the first local one I've seen. That's gross. Mm-hmm. There you go, Sheriff. Florida Sheriff's <laughs> Department. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> yeah, he got the fucking Alex Webster with that fucking beer can. He did. <laughs> 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 <clears throat> Yeah, you got fucked up in that part. Let's get the Ox 45. Yeah, I love that, though. It's great. What, the Ox 45? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, oh, take she's some big, she's like, these are talls. Yeah. <clears throat> he looks like shit by the end of this movie. Well, I mean, hell, he just got hit in the face with his fucking thing. Uh, he's getting hit in the face for a while, and then that fucking dad shows up and beats his ass, too. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. I think it's also more of a thing where it's like, you know, he's like the nice guy. He's the one that gets... I wish, honestly, in Hunts, I should have asked him if both the girls had capes. Right. I mean, I think that's a valid thing to ask. If they both did, you know? Yeah, I mean, you never... I don't know. You ever saw that? Or was it baby nubs? You know. If it's the nubs, I don't go flying without a cape. I have a cape here on this parachute. The hell's that? My fucking uh, cat is having a stroke in here. Yeah, that's that's one fat cat. Did you just release Lucifer? Yeah, she sounds like a fucking dog in there, looking at the door. Oh. Did you get on the bout, Lucifer? She will, I guess. She was fucking freaking out. Or she's gonna fuck him with the other cat and then piss him off. I don't know. They'll be over there dealing with it. Tastes like shit. What are you doing? That's Lucifer. Yep. That's who was plucking at the door. I don't think so, Lucifer. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fastest walking cat. It's like fast. Wait, was that Lucifer or was that Tubby? That was Lucifer. <clears throat> She's gotten big. Mm-hmm. She's just fucking with the other cat and through that damn door. <laughs> Fat who I just hated that fucking cat. So many nights. Remember that one night it was raining. I just wanted to be like, Ram! <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> fucking annoying. Oh, she usually doesn't bother you, though. 
She's just fucking nuts. No, she's always bothered me. What do you mean she doesn't <laughs> bother? She's always been like, yeah, oh, he's your... here, he's uncomfortable. Let me lay in his lap. It's like, no. <laughs> she's your friend. Me. I'm going to fucking eat with a golf club. <laughs> she's your friend. <laughs> That's so gross. She's like, I gotta take a dump. I thought she said. And rewind it, I swear to God, she's like, I gotta take a dump. It's always disturbed me. Anytime a chick says that to me, although this part is hilarious, I love watching him puke. Yeah. It's like, because it does the... Pukes on and, like, and when he finally does, it's like... <laughs> it's like, it's like this guitar music when he hosses. I go to England on an exchange student thing. They have a real cool lit program on the Yeah. I would have gone this summer, but my dad wouldn't let me. He thinks I'm a failure ever since I didn't make the cheerleader team in seventh grade. Cheerleaders? I don't even think we have cheerleaders at my school. Everybody's too busy getting stoned. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of true at my school, too. Uh, do you uh, catch my buzz off of that thing? Yeah, I think so. You? My head hurts. Now, is that Lucifer or is yeah. I'm gonna take a dump. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take a dump. Oof. Yeah, it's a. Yeah, she's more of a solid yeah. gray color. This is. I'm actually in the chick's position when I'm talking to women sometimes. I gotta take a dump. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's already like, he's not trying this for This is me. the best right here, though. You, you gotta leave this on. Session. She pulled up. She pulled up her. Like, he's she like, has like a V too. Watch, she does this stuff. The oh, yeah. And he throws up on her. Oh, yeah, that's a bad one. When you start doing that, yeah, that's the drunken sound. I fucking hate that. <laughs> you shouldn't have smoked our cup of beer. beer, beer. <laughs> well, he's been drinking all fucking night then. He was drinking that schnapps, and then he drank that pussy, pussy rich boy beer at the fucking par- at Maldoon's party. And then he was drinking the Bacardi, and then more Ox 45, and then he was fucking smoking a ditch weed. <laughs> he's trying to figure out where to, he's trying to figure out where to hoss. So yeah, he's been partying all night. Just a minute. <laughs> Oh. It's a pretty good depiction of it because I mean that's what it feels like. <laughs> oh, looks like fucking Exorcist puke too. So nasty. You heard me when you were talking to him. I was like, you did the fucking chair puke, <laughs> chair hoss, yeah, the chair Ralph. It's fucking hysterical. Fucking chair spew. Fucking dad sits in it later. It's so fucking gross. If it looks like something out of like a trauma movie. It's just like this green slime. I'll tell you chair. what, I could not keep drinking after I puke. I'm done. Oh, I do. I reset. I'm just like, time for me to drink more. Oh my god. Unless it's bad one where I'm like sitting there for two hours and puke. And, and here's gotta... the space sequence. Yeah. There's a 2001 right here. You can mute this if you want. Yeah. Well, no, no, I actually leave it. I love the whole B-O-C. B is fucking rad. <laughs> Not this, but when it actually goes to the law thing. Yeah. I just forget she, like, comes back and lays with him. That's kind of cool. Every time I hear this song, just, uh, what do I think of immediately? Myers is following him in the car while they're getting high. Yeah. Amazing. It is amazing. Same here. When he and I saw the remaster at the Dollar Man, I was like, Come on, Come baby. Song is all. Awesome. I've never gotten tired of this song. Yeah. I mean, it's like just something more to it, though. I meant to tell him too that this movie really got me listening to videos. What's all that bullshit oh, yeah. you talk about? Getting hit by a laser at that Blue Oyster Cold show? And then seeing that big eyeball? Long Island Boys, too. I mean, what can I say? Man? So the band's awesome. It's the fucking love. I mean, I've always liked yeah. it, but this Maybe movie kind of they, they still, to this day, I'm glad this movie gives them credit for shit, too. I, they don't really still even now even get really credit for anything. 
Yeah, maybe there's something more. They're such a good band for what they mm. do. Yeah, maybe <laughs> you know, super trippy shit, but they're you are such a weirdo. You know, it's good stuff. But at least you got something going on upstairs. Sorry, I can't say the same to those dicks you hang around with. I like the soundtrack in this, and a lot of it, you know, there's some of it that's in days like slow rides on there and stuff like that. But you know, it's not as much about the music. Like I like the boys or cults, Ew. like the main focus of the sound? actual music. Mm, but that's me, man. Ripped two. Don't ask me, man. Now it's that puke. Oh, he's just this weird dude up north. It's kind of cool, actually. I like how she's like, I gotta take it down. Yeah. Hey, Joe. Yeah. Do you think I have a fat ass? Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Joe. Joe, come here. See, he was about to do the thing right here, and he gets interrupted. Get your ass up here, man. So I probably didn't notice when I watched it the last few times. He's, they like gave each other a look like they were about to start. Like, uh, and then he was like... Totally. Yeah, yeah. he got interrupted. And then he goes down there and gets on her. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I was bad about what happened, so... I talked to me. Yeah. I told him it was your birthday, man. She's gonna give you a blowjob. She went through that bullshit? Oh, no, not really, man. But then I told her you're all fucked up. You know, because your dad used to kick your ass all the time. <laughs> she went for it. Fuck, man. Oh, what's going on out here? I'm nothing, man. We're just hanging out. Why are you never shirt off, man? I'm just talking, <laughs> man. Well, that fucking pussy shit. What the fuck is this? Don't worry about it. We're out here. Okay, man. She's killing Here's the whole consciousness part. Remember, he went into a whole thing about this, which I thought was yeah. cool. Some more Mr. Skinless stuff here. I won't get into it, but it's almost there. I love this. This is fucking awesome. I think it's fucking cool the way they do it. Find a fucking SG. SG. face on that. <laughs> he gets a lot of cross-sided, like, ugh. But it's cool, you know, we, we talked to him about, um, you know, the Blister Cold thing, and how they use, you, know, you know, you can tell that there's, like, stock footage of I love he's eating that fucking burrito from, <laughs> from the That's car. That's the potato one, yeah, yeah from from the beginning of the movie. That fucking tack eats. <laughs> he's like an old man. <laughs> it's so fucking weird, this part. But the... <laughs> He's just like on like a. I thought that I mean, was cool too. It's like it a, is, a know, bed. It's like a bed, but it's a fucking hospital bed right. and it's a grave at the same time. It's 2001. Yeah, it is. No, it's awesome. Um, <laughs> and uh, we were talking about the Blue Oyster Cult thing. Obviously, it's like some kind of like a. You know, it's like a live, a live DVD like footage of them or something. No, but uh, I love how they the way they show, it's badass. Where no, like, it looks great. It's showing that, but they're like sitting, like, they're like doing the beat. It's fucking yeah. cool. But then at the end, it's got the uh, Eric Bloom and um, he's got the Ox Forty Five bottle. Look. And Donald are actually, what are they? yeah, the Ox bottle. They're selling the bootleg T-shirts after the credits. Like the they actually had the dudes from Blue Oyster Cult in it. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, singer and the guitar player. Yeah, and they talked about we talked about that. And, You know, a bunch of stuff. We got that interview coming up. Oh, shit. And, and then here we go. He's already just fucking... <laughs> <laughs> He's like fucking straight up on our ass. It's... 
But you know what? I've 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 been in situations like this before where that's what that chick wanted, and I was trying to play it cool, but they were just wanting some dude to ride them. Exactly. But well, that was gonna happen. But I was being, you know, Joe. You and know? me too. And that's usually in situations how I am anyway. Like, I'm actually. I had to learn to be hubs. It wasn't right. something that you just. But sometimes it's just not you. You know, like for me. Ugh. Usually for me, I can. Spawn out. Right here. <laughs> usually for me, it takes me a while to actually get cues where everything's like comfortable enough to where we can like. I don't fucking think so. Start doing stuff, you know? Like, I'm not good at reading when things are like, yeah, this is going really well. Like, I have no idea. She's fixed now or something? She's been fixed since we got her. Oh, she's just fucking eat and sit in the bedroom. She looks like a goddamn rat. (laughs) What I was saying was, like, women usually have to be pretty abrasive with me and just kind of. Like, almost do it on their own, but it, it, I'm not really good at just being like, yeah, this is the most. There's crap. Yeah. <clears throat> not with, like, a sh- stranger chick, you know, like, uh, people I know is different, you kind of know. <clears throat> when it comes oh, well, to like a fucking stranger, you know, it's harder to read sometimes, so. We saw you first, technically, or his chicks. You should put this on. This is actually funny. Well, this is like the... This one shit hits the fan right here. Hashem, he's totally thrashing the door. Tell him to leave. I don't think it's going to be that easy. He straight up looks like a shining thing. What? Can leave us here? Hey, you know how it is. If you want help, man, we gotta hang. You want to eat your ass kicked? You just can't these chicks to come's brother. Some old dude whipping ass. Yeah. He's beat, he beat the shit out of everyone out there. Whoa! Some old dude's out there kicking ass! <laughs> God damn. Here comes brother. Oh! Are you on the He's gonna pound his knockers! <laughs> <Not hard. laughs> It's about to be bow time for me. Daddy. It's almost over. I'm today. starving, so. Want to get bow time? Yes. What the hell are you doing with my daughter? It's fine. Hey man, these are our chicks. Your chicks. <laughs> Your chicks. <laughs> yeah, man, we were about he talks to really proper. 
It says David Groves. What's going on? Nothing happened, huh? Lady, what did these guys do to you? Kenny's the one that was in Baywatch. Nothing. You remember him from the Shawn Michaels episode? She didn't even give me head. <laughs> she didn't give remember me head. Remember, he was the one chasing fucking uh, Pam Anderson's mom, remember? And he's Frank Larkin. In Baywatch. <laughs> oh, that, wind, that window is like came out one piece. Get up here, So Tales from the Dark Side, that's pretty cool. Oh, that is cool. Uh, some horror shit for you. <laughs> oh, he sits down on that fucking pew. It's fucking nasty. Operator, give me the police. Daddy, you don't have to call the cops. Shut up, you hear me? Just shut their mouth. Shut your mouth. Yes, officer, I'm down here in the corner house of Ocean and Rose. I got a young punk here. I caught him trespassing. You might be able to get him on a sex offense. I didn't do nothing, man. Daddy, it wasn't his fault. He kept those guys out of the house. Yes, officer, I'll keep him here until you arrive. There's a bunch of other hoodlums hanging around. Hoodlums. What's your buddy's name? You're not a narc. He's not talking. I'm sure he'll crack once you get him downtown. Yeah, it's across the way from uh, that Frankie Avalon place. Right. Frankie Avalon. Stay put. He's got to go get some pea cubes. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Yeah, he, he does know a 60 drink. And then he drinks piss cubes and he sits on his fucking vomit. Oh. <laughs> oh. Joe's, peaky. Joe's face, he's getting the double too. He's getting the sitting on puke and fucking <laughs> drinking his piss. <laughs> it, Joe's face is priceless. He's, he's the only one in the room that knows about it. He's, <laughs> he's trying not to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> he's smiling. <laughs> That's the most enjoyable awesome. shit ever. This guy thinks he's a badass. It's like, yeah, you're drinking my fucking urine, buddy. <laughs> I don't know what it is with you kids. What are you seeing punks like that? Anyway? Sitting on my puke. <laughs> so you're not the prettiest girl around town. You should be able to attract something better than flash like this. <laughs> you, lady. Oh, you could have it all. Oof. It just breaks my heart to see you give it away like some tramp. Shut up, Warren. What about that bikini? What? What was that? I said, what about that bikini you bought her? She could watch her out by the pool and sport wood, man. <laughs> hey, those were real poker shows. That was the only reason I... Hey, but calls his ass out. Hey, stay out of this, you long-haired punk. punk. Somebody ought to teach you some respect for your elders. Respect? Man, this is all bullshit, man. You think Jill should be some airheaded cheerleader, man? I mean, what the fuck is that? I mean, the chick is smart, man. You treat her like shit. I know where's some fucking tack, man. What the hell is tack? She's just dude. some dude. It's just some dude. <laughs> it's always... Hey, don't turn this around on me. <laughs> what do you kids get me ahead to behave this way? What do you get your values? From that stinking heavy metal music you listen to day and night. Yeah, that's it, man. It's all the music. You know, everything's just fine until we listen to a couple of heavy metal albums. Then we get all fucked up. You need to get that as a sample for yeah. the... Podcast. You're gonna have a lot of. It's all fucked up. All when you're locked away, just got heavy metal records and all. Send me to Judy. I don't give a fuck, man. Why don't you just leave these chicks alone, man? I'm just trying to have a good time. Oh. <laughs> 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 I fucking love it. 
he's still carrying the hops, too. <laughs> I guess he did. He just chucked it. Another cool tidbit from the interview you'll hear here in a little bit. The, that whole scene with the glasses. Jack, Jack. It's, it's really cool. Fuck you, you fucking worm. <laughs> I can kick his beer. <laughs> and there come the popo. No thanks. You guys think I didn't want to see some girl or drink a bunch of beer? Hell. They used to call me <laughs> Quick <Dick> Dick Dean. <laughs> hey, hey, Joe. What the hell are you doing here? I don't know. Her last name, she's like Jewish or something. I just couldn't stick around and get popped, man. I told you, I got such an asshole. She's kept hers like Thorn. You're in the wrong position. Do not attempt to run. Hey, I, you know, I, I might come back down here sometime, you know, and I thought maybe we could party or something. Yeah, um, I'll call you. What, what's your last name? Why'd you call Rockwitz? It's in the book. Why'd you call Rockwitz? Cool, man. <laughs> he was like, hey, how do you spell Why'd you call It doesn't sound it. It doesn't sound like it's it's spelled like it's kind of like, like my name, but it's more of a bunch of water. <laughs> Grabs a fat ass. Love that part too. I always thought in this part he was gonna say he's like, man, you do got a fat ass or something. Fuck, you get busted? Let's go. Later, Joe. It's like, what the fuck was that back there, dude? <laughs> Sorry, basically, I muted the rest of this movie, but it's cool. The cop's doing it again. Doggy Dorothy. He's like, weren't there three of you? Where's the party? Just over there, man. Where's the other one? You know how it is. You snooze, you lose. She was messing up the ratio. Ugh. Ugh. Yikes. <laughs> hey, now Joe's driving. I love this. You check it out, man. It's Frankie Avalon. Can you tell me where the uh, Frankie Avalon house is? <laughs> it's like a bunny. Uh, yeah. It's about two blocks down there on the left. Great. I hear there's a shitload of fine chicks down there. <laughs> hey, go for it, dude. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, that was originally supposed to be William Shatner. <laughs> I hear there's a shitload of chicks down there. Look at Shatner, I'll laugh my fucking dick off. Oh, man. Fuck. <laughs> that was a perfect night, man. I got drunk and laid by a rad chick. <laughs> what was that back there, man? What? How come you slob on other chick? You ain't be jumping on the grenade no more. Don't worry about it, man. Phone number, man. How'd you spell Logic Cockowitz anyway? What are you gonna fucking call her, man? That's the whole point. She's from up north. You don't have to deal with her again. <laughs> and even porker, thank God. <laughs> porker, thank God. You gotta wonder where I get pork from. from. It's in a bunch of stuff that I grew up watching. Man, I'm <laughs> digging on that chick. <laughs> what does she have? Like a good personality, man? <laughs> You porker, thank God. Uh, you're thinking too much, pussy. <laughs> hey, fuck you, man. Fuck me? Yeah, fuck you. Took a dex. You want to get your ass?
ass kicked over some fat ass chick, man. She's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Comes full circle, you know, because he's getting fuck, put him in a headlock in the you know, beginning of the movie. It's like the whole thing comes full circle. It's very, Damn, Joe. very well written. You were now, man. <laughs> I think that's the last year called shit on. <laughs> It's fucking great. we didn't do for this we should have I'm not saying to do it really quick while the credits are still going I won't even do the plug thing oh wow gnarly eyeball maker screaming mad George no shit god damn it woo I never wow. know that I made he fucking, on he fucking designed this, the eyeball wow that's amazing that's cool as fuck Real quick, uh, we'll just do it. Fuck it. Altering the future. Uh, 1994. I don't think we've ever done it. Pulp Fiction, Lion King, Forrest Gump, Shawshank Redemption, The Crow, Natural Born Killers, Ed Wood, Interview with a Vampire, uh, The Mask, which was Chuck Russell did Dream Warriors, all that shit. Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, uh, True Lies, Dumb and Dumber, Speed, Clerks, The Flintstones, uh, Airheads Wes Craven's New Nightmare It was garbage uh, Stargate Clear and Present Danger D2 The Mighty Ducks uh, Time Cop with Van Damme uh, Richie Rich uh, Star Trek Generations The Little Rascals Street Fighter The Page Master Little Giants Mary Shelley's Frankenstein Maverick, The Shadow, Blank Check, Three Ninjas Kick Back. Usually when we do this shit, it was movies that I watched that I grew up watching, but these are like, most of these are movies that I've got I actually... i the music going to be burned through it. Most of these are actually movies that came out because I was fucking alive, so this is awesome. Like, these are all good movies. You can burn uh, through the music? The Client, The Santa Claus, uh... La, 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 la. Some horror, get me some horror. In the Mouth of Madness, John Carpenter... Phantasm 3, Lord of the Dead. So we have done this before. Uh, Brain Scan, Night of the Demons 2, Death Machine, Lurking Fear, Pumpkinhead 2, Leprechaun 2, uh, The Puppet Masters, Class of 1999 2, Mosquito, Ghoulies 4, and yeah, go for it, burn it. Incantation, Mortal Throne of the Nazarene, WFO from Overkill. Opus Nocturne from Marduk, Pentagram from Borgoroth, Awake from Dream Theater, 
Plug since we had them on. All right. Uh, blasphemy Flash from Cryptopsy. Uh, Tom from Merciful Fate. And Hell yeah. It's really underrated. Testament right Low. Bolt Thrower for Victory. Hell yeah. And uh, Far Beyond Driven from Pantera. Mayhem. Dom Mistrius Dom Santos. All right, here we go. Hey man, the cult t-shirts. Oh, they are. Logo. <clears throat> Fucking Blue Esther cult. Hey, look. Zilla. Mm. <laughs> Five bucks. Real tour t-shirts. Guaranteed authentic. Here's the accent too. He's like, it's authentic. <laughs> it's fucking great. It is awesome that they did that. Hell, they were still touring back then, though. Yeah. I don't think they do anything now. Not much. Once in a while, they'll play some off festival things or they'll fucking do fairs or casinos or something. Uh, but yeah, final thoughts. The movie's amazing. So glad you introduced me to it. And, uh,. It's definitely instant, instant favorite. Fucking love it. Michael um, Coppolo, fucking awesome. Yeah, I'm so glad that uh, he came on. And thank you again so much for being a part of this and and taking your time. And we look forward to phone book and every other project you have coming up. And uh, to celebrate the 25th anniversary of this film, we did something very special for it. And uh, we're so glad that this is uh, still around and it's just getting bigger. And uh, hopefully, it gets a nice Blu-ray package release here eventually in the near future and uh, we can the blue torpedo release. the blue torpedo blu-ray which that was actually a really good idea yeah it's a great idea from him <clears throat> so yeah the stone Age, it's on uh, the 2b app right now streaming you can actually buy it on dvd from amazon um or just if you find it out anywhere go ahead and go ahead and pick it up and yeah um the interview with with uh michael coplo who played joe in the stone Age is here for you me and the doctor did so uh, enjoy it thank you for listening and let's end, end it on a fun note together you can do your say your thing and then we'll do something together just follow me say All right. your thing uh, stay gory or one fifty one. are you gonna boogie with the foxes tonight you know how it is bro do with the Lanny Green Springs. The sexies love it. I know, thanks, man. You're lost, because I'm having a special. Now, if you want to get these chicks in the mood, make them move. Put them on the floor. Do the hustle. Put a little insanity on your potato. Shake it, man. It'll make them melt like a popsicle. Doing, man? Oh, hey, Hoops. I need some ID. It's cool, man. I'm 25. Sure. You must have left your wallet in your sports coat. Hmm. Shit. I, uh, thanks anyway, man. This is just really fucking cool. Um, but do you kind of start up the I guess we'll kind of start with this kind of tell us where you got started what got you involved in acting okay um yeah uh well I think it was the the first the I think it was entertaining my sister first because we had cats <laughs> and I <laughs> and I used to um like make like uh, like these little plays of their voices and stuff and what they were th- what I thought they were thinking and um, <laughs> like cracker I would crack her up yeah. because we had one really like enormously and now like, I do again actually it's kind of strange one really enormous fat cat um, named Oliver who was a girl mm-hmm. um, and then my my cat was um, named Fluffy not very <laughs> uh, creative creative right. name but <laughs> it's, it's like Spike for a dog. She was, and... it, yeah, but she was fluffy. And I think when I look back on it, not that that made me think, okay, because I'm imitating, making up cat voices and stuff like that, that made me want to act. But that's kind of think where it started. Yeah. Was it probably that initially just kind of getting that feeling of 
um, that I, I could do this, whatever it was, and make her laugh. And then it, and essentially then if I, you know, it, I did it, you know, I was doing it with my brother and then my mother and like just whoever would come over for that matter. Not just like cats, but create characters. Yeah. And um, just like we had a lot of free time as kids and, you know, my brother and I like resented going to school because we just hated <laughs> it. So we just, we would just kind of just stay home, just kind of goof around, play instruments and then like create these characters and just kind of go into like imagination land or something. But it was, wasn't until high school um, uh, when I was in, I was in drama class because there was no, I, I it was almost like I, I picked it because there was no electives. So I had, I had to kind of, you know, I wanted to be in the shop and all that other stuff, but there, there was just, there was, that was the only one available. Right. And then I, and so I was in drama and I was like, oh, man, this is going to suck. And everyone just kind of seemed lame to me. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Right. Everyone was like obnoxious and wouldn't stop talking and loud and needed a lot of attention. And I was like, man, this is gonna drive me crazy. <laughs> uh, but, but we, but we had an assignment. It was the first assignment where we had to uh, pick something, uh, introduce ourselves, um, and you know, you know, state our name, and do something to people so they would remember what we did, so that they wouldn't forget our name. Right. And I just happened to. I was working in, at this like novelty shop and I had this fake snot this thing that like that was kept on me just to be obnoxious <laughs> and like gross people out yeah. <laughs> and so you know people came up and sang and did these things and all, the, all this stuff like that and I'm just like you know what I'm just gonna go up there pretend to sneeze and have this giant snot come out of my nose <laughs> and gross people out and then just say my name <laughs> <laughs> and so it was honest truth and so it came time for me to get up there and I was, you know, I was shaking, I was nervous just because I don't like being, I didn't like, still kind of don't, right. um, being in front of a lot of people, um, unless I know what I want to do. And did it and I was like, sat there and I didn't say anything, I just kind of sat there and looked at everybody with the uncomfortable laughter, whole classroom, and I just pretend to sneeze and this giant snot comes out of my nose. <laughs> and, um, and it's like super glue or you know, plastic or whatever it is. Right. And I, everyone went, oh God, oh my God, oh, oh my God. And, they like, <laughs> and then I just, I pulled it out and waved it in the air to show them the fake. Yeah. And said, hi, I'm Michael, hi, I'm Michael Coppola. That's and amazing. And then that was it. <laughs> and <laughs> that was, <laughs> and I realized at that very moment, I was like, oh my God, I just did what I would normally do to get kicked out of class. Yeah. And I just, and I just did that as a class assignment. Yeah, and got like and got laughed for it, and I said, "This is the greatest class in the world." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you basically auditioned right there, you know. <clears throat> yeah, and then yep, and then that's when the that's when the realization hit, and I started getting more and more into it from that from <laughs> from that point on. That's awesome, man. So was like, don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. That was the first thing I guess I saw you in. So that was. Uh-huh. That had to have been fun. I, was it fun? All of the the yeah. I met Keith at a convention about eight years ago, and he was pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know what he. It was pretty yeah, funny. Keith is a cool motherfucker. I mean, he. Um, <laughs> I just saw him like uh, a few months ago. He was doing a play here in L.A., and uh, I went and saw his play. He was fantastic. He, he was a, he was hilarious. That's awesome. And then I waited. You know, <laughs> after the play, he freaked out. I hadn't seen him maybe. Maybe since we maybe since we did that movie. Oh wow! wow. And um, yeah, <laughs> like we hugged it out, and I was just like, "Hey man, how you doing? How you doing?" I, said, I looked around the corner, and I said, "Oh shit!" <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, man, that was that was that was an incredible experience. That was my first film. Like, if you can imagine, I was going to Cal Arts studying theater, and then um, you know took a leave of absence from that place, and then. Then bam, my first my first feature yeah. is Don't Fall on the Babysitter's Dead with like with Christine Applegate and um, you know, David Duchovny and I like he wasn't huge then, but I knew who he was. And uh, I can't remember her name, but the chick from Blade Runner. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, Which is awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. But no, it was amazing, man. That was a uh, that was that was an incredible experience. And that cast and also was crazy. Was that? <laughs> the cast that movie's no, crazy. No. All the people that are in that movie. Yeah, when you look back, I mean, even when it when it was, you know, my agents at the time, 
freaked. And they were just like, okay, uh, this, you just booked this movie and these are the people in it. And I was just, you know, this, I didn't, I don't know if that was like pre IMDb or not. I can't remember, remember. But it was, it was, it was nuts because I was like, I knew half of the people in the cast list because you get like a script. Yeah. Well, obviously, duh, you get a, of course you get a script. But um, they bring it to your house and you, then you see the cast list yeah. and all the, all who's playing what on that list. And you're like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, this is going to be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, you know, I was nervous as all hell. Yeah. Because I, I was like, I'm, I'm, you know, like, how, okay, I'm just, these people are actually legit famous. Like, well, <laughs> what am I going to, who am I? Like, what the hell? But, um, yeah, and I was, it was, it was a, it was a great time. And then after that, what did, after that, was it point break after that, I guess, that you, I mean, yeah, as far as like, um, I saw it. Yeah, my first day of uh, shooting, um, and I was so nervous, man. We had this big Chinese buffet. <laughs> oh, this will lead. This will lead into Point Break. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, it's like I never, I never seen this much fucking food. I was like, it was my I, or that kind of like, like wow, the way they take care of you on a set, um, yeah. or like a you know, that has definitely changed on some of the shittier films I've been on. But there's like uh, on the bigger films, or the you know, I have a good budget. They're like, they've been, they feed you so well, it's ridiculous. But they brought out all this Chinese food, and it was like, I, could, I, just, I ate way too much, and I got sick. Yeah. Um, oh, man. But, um, <laughs> but apparently, Catherine Bigelow was on set uh, the first day of shooting. Awesome. Um, <laughs> that scene where we're like on the roof somewhere, and I say something like, let's go to Guitar Center, or we're all just kind of like, I, I don't really remember the, the, the <laughs> yeah. that, but. <laughs> and um, the uh, she apparently was just watching, and Stephen Herrick, uh, I you know I think he directed um Bill, um Bill and Ted's and all that stuff, so that was making me nervous that he he was the director. Oh yeah, uh, a big fan of that film. And so apparently she saw I mean like freaking Catherine Bigelow's there, you know, and she apparently saw the scene and she kind of asked me or asked the director to ask me then I got in touch with my agents and they asked me to come in and read for this um, movie it wasn't called Point Break at the time it was called Riders on the Storm oh huh and yeah and I still have an original like Riders on the Storm script that's awesome they, they changed the name hell yeah and yeah it's cool and um, I, I, just, I went in and I don't know who she was I don't know who anyone was I don't know anything about the film went into that audition uh, and she's like handing me the lines which was the scene you saw or what everyone saw and kind of looked it over a few times and then just ran it and she asked me on the spot in the room she goes you want to do this you want to do this movie <laughs> 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 I'm like hell fucking yeah I don't, I don't know what movie it is but yeah <laughs> and then then you can imagine I, I shit twice when I got this script and I found out who's in it and I found out Keanu Reeves Patrick Swayze and, yeah. and, uh, and Gary Busey on top of it are in this movie <laughs> and then and then fucking Anthony Kiedis from the Chili Peppers yeah I was like are you, are you freaking serious <laughs> like what the hell but like, what did I do right <laughs> like, <laughs> did you ever watch yeah, that the, was the remake of it I got it so bad oh man I um there were two there was like the play there was like the point break play I didn't know about that playing at it. <laughs> You ever hear about that? No. Oh my god! I gotta tell you guys, it's hilarious. It's basically, I'm <laughs> kind of mean, but it's basically uh, they do like a Rocky Horror kind of version of Point Break. That's wow. awesome. But, but, but what, what, what they what they do is um they pick somebody from the audience to play the Keanu Reeves part. Mm -hmm. And he has to he has to read cue cards <laughs> that they don't show him until he's got a second line. <laughs> wow! <laughs> and, Very interesting. And just, <laughs> I'm an FBI agent, and so they um, it's kind of mean, but they apparently it took off. It's really hilarious. And a hmm. friend of mine that owned a club. Was like, oh man, you gotta come and please, would you please, please, please play that part? Just volunteer, they'll pick you, just do it. And I was like, no, I can't, I won't, I can't do that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, funny. the remake, 
That would be too mean. Um, but the but funny the uh, the uh, remake. Nah, I, I watched ten minutes of it and turned it off. Oh god, it's so it's so <laughs> just. I've never seen it. It looks like a like a like a modern like MTV like music video. Like it, it's it's like a two hour music video. It's just bad. I watched. Yeah, it. exactly. Now, I was watching it like, when's the movie gonna start? <laughs> it's, and it's people can say what they want. I mean, I I love the original movie. It's just I remember seeing it at the theater. I've always liked it. And but the yeah. God that that remake. It's like talk about you know we're. God, some remakes are just really like it's just awful. It's just the casting's bad, and it's just I don't know what the deal is with the like the the guy that's supposed to be the Gary Busey character, like the police officer. He's like British. Yeah. Or something. It's it's awful. It's like what what is this? <laughs> and they're, they're like these I I extreme I sports. It. It's like a Mountain Dew ad for two hours. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> <laughs> like extreme point break. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just, no. I mean, it ruined the whole. Yeah. You know, you it just ruined the whole thing. Like I, watching the you know, the express, it was cool. You know, they're like robbing, and I, I mean, it's simplistic, but it's fucking cool. It's like, and they ruined all that. Like made it like, oh, they're this. He's like this Bond villain, but he's an extreme sports guy. It's like, <laughs> it's. <No. laughs> I'm mean, it just. Was, like I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't. And I, I mean, I, I have a, I like weird taste sometimes when it comes to films, and like, not weird. I just like, you know, it doesn't have to be. I'm easy. Well, let me put it this way: I'm, I'm easily entertained. Right. Um, Same here. I am too, really. But, but if I love movies. I fucking, you know, grew up well. I, you know, I love making them, being in them, all that, all that. So it's hard for me to be like, ooh. But you know, of course, yeah. The you know, Point Break is personal, but um, it sucked. I mean, it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like I'm glad everyone those actors got paid and they you know they got to work and all that shit. But like, don't call it Point Break. Just call it something else. Yeah, yeah, because they, they call it Extreme Mountain Dew Ad Bond Villain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, the red, break. it's the Red Bull invitation. <laughs> red or like break. I don't know. X like Games. Like Tenacious D. Like Break Like the Wind or whatever they want to call right. something else. It's not. Point and overturn. Uh, something else, but not that. Right. <laughs> point. Point broken. Now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the Stone Age. So how did now how did all that come about? The Stone Age. Yeah. Um. It started with a with basically an audition meeting. Um. Uh, Jim Malconi and and Rich Wilkes at uh, AFI, which is the American Film Institute. Okay. And they were they were students. They were like. There were students there, and they were doing their like final grad piece or something, where they get to put together like a twenty-minute film or something like that, a half an hour of some like a you know whatever piece. And they just uh, you know they I, I, I auditioned for it. They, were, they they I got a call to come in and read for this thing, and um, you know met them. Well, I didn't even we we got along so well, <laughs> like just right off the. Of, you know, just at first meeting that I didn't even read. <laughs> Sad. They just started talking about what it was. And those guys are so fucking cool. We just started just like shooting the shit and being like, okay, what about this? What about this? What about this? And, oh, you're making this movie. And who's this guy, Joe? And like, what's he about? And, da, 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 da. and I'm like, oh, I totally relate to that. That's like, sounds like my life. And then, <laughs> um, yeah, like, I'm actually going to go do that tonight. I'm actually going to get them fucking call my friend, do this, do this. But, um, <laughs> but like, it was, it was, that was it. It started from there. It started from that audition. Um, and I don't know if they offered it to me that day, but they were like, soon, without even really reading for it, they were like, you're perfect, man. You're the guy. Like, you are the, you're the guy for this. And I'm like, okay. So we made a student film, essentially, a really elaborate 35 millimeter, so, you know, student film. Wow. Um, that was, and it was called Tax Chicks. It wasn't called uh, Stone Age. And... If my memory serves me correct, Renee was in it as well. Huh. So we we um, we 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 just kept going, and then from there there was a screenplay, um, and then they started shopping around, and like different companies, different film companies were, were digging it, and it really looked like it was going to get sold, and then um, like an offshoot, like a Disney, like subsidiary kind of uh, was interested. 
but they wanted to um, uh, blow it out of proportion and kind of make it zany. Yeah. So we did a test shoot, and they brought in um, some other actors, and Renee still did that one as well, I, I think. And uh, I still played Joe. I came in, and we did like a, a another a couple scenes, a really really high production, high you know value production value, and just didn't feel right. And then finally, I think they just put their foot down. And they're like, we gotta make our movie, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, they went with, I think it was Trimark or uh, another company. Yeah. And they, uh, it was gonna be like lower budget, but they get to do what they want. And then I fucking had to audition for the damn film again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this sucks. I got to tell me. I, I must have auditioned for the Stone Age, like, 25 times or 50 times it's like just <laughs> keep going back to another audition another audition another audition another audition reading reading, reading you know this after that out of this after that yeah and um you know and then at one point it was like he, you know he passed away but Luke, like Luke Perry even auditioned for that film really wow. and yeah what did yeah. he what role like, did he audition uh, for hubs oh my <laughs> god <laughs> <laughs> that would have been crazy <laughs> that's amazing yeah, I saw, um, what's, okay, you gotta help me out this one. The, the, the girl who, um, or lady, uh, who, who, Showgirls, what's her name? Liz, Liz 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 that TV. Liz, yeah, man, she, I, I, I auditioned with her. She was gonna, she was trying out for the part of Laney. Wow, um, that's amazing. Yeah, and like afterwards, we were like, oh man, that's not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, it's, it's such a relatable film as far as, you know, people like me and Vincent here, too. You know, it's just, it, it's a very relatable movie. And even, you know, it's like 25 years ago this year, you know, yeah. that it came out. So, and it's still a very, I think a lot more people have tuned into it over the years that are starting to figure out what it is. But it's, you know. Yeah, man. It's a really cool, yeah, relatable film for sure. And, you know, I love the, the Blue Oyster Cult stuff. It's pretty cool. Do you actually like uh, Blue Oyster Cult? I do, actually. Originally, it was going to be um, Led Zeppelin, and oh. um, yeah, but I mean, you can imagine at the time how expensive that was. I couldn't afford it, oh, right. <laughs> you know. And, and I don't think Led Zeppelin was too eager to hand over the music to a movie called The Stone Age. Right. Like, at the time. Oh, right. <laughs> sure. I was like, you could, you could, I guess you like uh, Robert Planner. He's going, like, I don't know about this one. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> This is yeah, because what we're doing. But like I, but um, yeah. But uh, I really, but Blue Oyster Cult was fantastic. We actually got to meet him too. Oh wow, that's um, awesome. Yeah, but because uh, we, they had to. Well, they're like, at the end of the movie. movie. I mean, they're trying to sell you the. <laughs> yeah, I always thought is that actual. <laughs> that's them at the end of the. <laughs> was that an actual like that's... concert? Because it looked like it was a different concert already shot, and then you had the scene where you guys were watching. It. Oh no, at the end of the really credits, tell. so there's the whole. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah. that's on the merch. Yeah. yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think they got footage, you know, from from you know the the laboratories of Blue Oyster Cult somewhere. They just they gave them actual footage for it. And you um, got the but yeah, that was, that was that was Buck Garma, and I forgot the other guy's name that was outside. And that last that last tag at the, at the end of the film. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and those are real concert shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like trying to rip off the band. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that was that was one of my harder moments playing um, playing Joe. Because I really was a fan. I was like, <laughs> I, was yeah. like I was so excited. Like, I think they kind of like kept it from us that mm-hmm. they were actually going to show up. And I was like, holy, holy shit. Like, <laughs> serious? What, the guys from Blurster Cult? And then I was like, like wow, oh my, I, I'm kind of freaking out because I've always been a musician as well. Yeah. And I was like, this is, and I love Blurster Cult. And I was like, this is, I don't know, how, I don't know if I'm going to be able to concentrate. <laughs> <laughs> 
Man, I tell you, one of my favorite scenes is where you're going in Muldoon's and, and, and he's <laughs> taps like, yeah, assholes, let us in. He shoves him back. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. Freaking, um, yeah, yeah, fucking boot beauty. Mm-hmm. I got I had the chance. I had the opportunity to work with his dad, and then yeah, you got the you know I mean? yeah, that's pretty cool. I, like, if there's any, I don't know if there's any more Buseys, but I gotta like, you know, I gotta work with them all. But yeah, he, he's hilarious. He's he's so freaking funny, man. Now the movie, were you? I, I wanted to ask you, where all did you all shoot all that at? Was that all shot out in California? Or? Yeah, um, most of it was uh, shot, from what I remember, uh, San Fernando Valley. Okay. Nice. Like not too, not too, not too far from where I grew up. So it was, you know, the territory and just what we were doing was completely relatable. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't like I had to like go method acting for that. <laughs> it was it's like, about like thirty minutes. It was just outside of LA, right? Yeah. Just like, like yeah. Just like, give me a second. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. <laughs> I'm um, <heading> down. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. Mo- mostly in the South Valley. That's all. Awesome. Was shot. Like I said, I remember seeing it on like HBO at like three or four in the morning, and I I got like a VHS tape. Next time it came on, I had it like ready to go and record. And I watched the fuck out of that thing, and like, nice. um, yeah, that that seemed to be the thing because it wasn't. I mean, I've, I've I've said in some other uh, interviews that it never was released, and then somebody, you know, was like, "No, you're wrong. It was released." And then I was like, <laughs> "Okay, I'm sorry. I just I didn't know. <laughs> so I wasn't." <laughs> Um, and like, no, Mr. Coppola, you are absolutely incorrect. It was really. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, I, I would have totally seen it theatrically, but growing up in Florida, like, you know, I mean, I got it at the video store. Yeah. I remember buying the video store copy when the video store place went under, and I've got the DVD. We want a fucking Blu ray release of it, it's what I want now, but I think yeah. if, if Trimark still owns it, then that's Lionsgate, which would have been Fox, which yeah. I guess is now Disney. Okay, yeah. So yeah. There it is. It ended up at home anyway. <laughs> um, <I> <laughs> they need to put it on that Disney streaming app. <laughs> Fucking Disney, they like, get everything. <laughs> Got Pocahontas, Cinderella, The Stone Age. It's gonna be great. Put on the streaming. <laughs> Damn, and that's that's a night. Nice, that's that's a that's a that's a movie night right there. That's right. Well, now there's this. Uh, you know, on Xfinity, and, and Vincent brought this to my attention. Is how I actually watch this. Um, there's an app on there called Tubi. Like T-U-B-I, and it's got a ton mm-hmm. of stuff. And the Stone Age is on there streaming, and it actually looks really good. Like, well, however they really? like, did the the, yeah. the master of it looks great on there, streaming. So I don't know if they remastered it or, or just restored it or it's just kept up really well. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's streaming on there, and it looks great. I think it might be on Amazon video as well, if I'm not mistaken. But, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's it's streaming and stuff now, and that's more of the bigger thing to do, I guess. But we're, we're Blu-ray collectors, and that's that's a film that's like a good enough you know cult classic that definitely needs to be something that we can have physically yeah. for sure so we try to uh, kick some so. people in the pants yeah I, I, don't, I don't know if there are, are, like so is, is there a blu-ray of it no no no, that no, exists? no. not even like because I check all like the, like the European markets and stuff like there's no blu-ray of it and like I said I don't know if it's where it fell between like the cracks with the Primark. Well, well it's, it's Lionsgate. So yeah. Lionsgate had it forever, which is Fox, and then now that it got bought out, but I mean, I don't know. Uh, It'd be cool to, like, if they, if they ever do it, they could do, like, the, the blue torpedo ray version. Or yeah, yeah. That would yeah. be, be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the blue torpedo, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, Volkswagen, though. Like, yeah. Sponsor it. <laughs> yeah. Now, whose uh, car was that? It was just one of you guys made for the movie, or was it actual... It was a, it was like a shop vehicle that they had specially made. Um, I wanted to I wanted to buy it afterwards, and I'm, I'm mad I didn't. But somebody somebody got it, and they were selling it for some ridiculous low pl- like ridiculously low price. So yeah, like, you can't be selling it for that. <laughs> um, but um, then I really thought like, where am I at the time? I'm like, where am I gonna park it? I'm like, where? I think it's gonna get ripped off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, some crazy like fan. That's like, like, like the shittiest area. <laughs> <laughs> some crazy I, fan. Like, you know, <laughs> some some guy <laughs> jacked it from like, Yeah, some like whacked out hippie is going to be like, jackpot. And then steal it. <laughs> Those think the car is cool 20 years later. They're just like, oh, that was from the Stone Age. I got rid of it. Damn it. <laughs> the know. drag yeah. queens and don't tell them on the babysitter's dead stealing that <laughs> the, the, the woman's <laughs> car. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's hilarious. 
you know the the one person in that movie I wanted to ask you about the um, uh, Taylor the the guy at the liquor store. Yeah, Taylor Nagar. Yeah. Man, that guy's fucking awesome. He's in was in so many movies and like. Oh yeah. Was he cool? Like, was he cool to work with? And unbelievably, we became actually um, friends, like legit friends afterwards. Um, and I like like hung out and did stuff. And um, he was making all he was really into making a lot of home, like ex, you know, experimental, like strange, funny movies. Oh, like, that's cool. And stuff. I used to go to his house all the time and he'd like call me up and be like, Michael, okay, I got this really crazy idea. You're going to play a goat and you're going to, you're going to be in my yard. Okay. And it's kind of like a Greco Roman thing, whatever. I'm going to play like this wizard and you, whatever. And it's like this crazy, crazy, hilarious stuff. And he had all these like computer props and all that stuff. And then he, he blew up this play he wanted me to do. Um, but that never materialized. But he was, and also he was one of my sort of, uh, like cameo heroes yeah. from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Oh yeah, who, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I come in, beat the dude, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, I'm in it. But also, like, die hard for Christ's sake, you know? Yeah. And last I'm voice cast, what I remember, I love that movie. I don't know why, but every time I think of that guy, I think of either Stone Age or Last Boy Scout. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so that was like a, you know, I found out he was doing it. I was like. I was thrilled. I was like, "This, I can't wait to to work with this guy and to see what see what that's about. See, see where that goes." Um, but he he was amazing, man, and uh, hilarious, like hilarious. I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get through this scene. <laughs> <laughs> Probably my favorite scene. Like he came up with, he, I, I think he just came up with all that on his own. I think he just kind of like, I'm not sure, but it's, I think he was just like, you know, there's some lines, obviously, but I think he just came up with. His whole, his whole, you know, improvised a bunch of stuff or something. But um, I remember watching it and being like, "I'm, I'm, I'm not losing." It's just so instant too. He's like right on as soon as it, the, the scene starts when you're in the liquor store. It's just hysterical. <laughs> it's just instant. Yeah, I started laughing. Stuff. Yeah, I started laughing the second he's on <laughs> on the screen. It was, it was hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> he, no, he was. He was. Um, yeah, he was amazing. And then of course the scene right after that where you know Hubs has a liquor bottle he's like we're getting late tonight and it's amazing oh, oh yeah Slap your greasy grandpappy I'm getting laid it's awesome. yeah <laughs> That's the best. it's crazy I just I, I, I recently um, I, I watched it um, not that long ago and was just was, was struck by the uh, it's like it's, we've created our own or gym really enriched but I created their own language their own slang well, because everyone has that kind yeah. of growing up and, and you know you have your own words that mean not what they mean but your right. friends know what they mean yeah um, but it's just like the the language was so hilarious and it's stuff that I don't think you can get away with anymore yeah um, I loved it back you know the the language is probably the, what I like the most about the movie because it's got it's own like little culture to it and the yeah. yeah, it's like these aren't talls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need some talls. <laughs> I was laughing my ass. Get <laughs> it's not rack. It's tall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not rack. The, the, who called me that? The entire the entire scene with towards the end with you and Clifton, where he here he's like, man, maybe you can find a chick that has acne problem too. <laughs> like, oh, dude, that was. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, fuck you, I won't find shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like our moment of reckoning when it's sitting there, we're like, like, you know. Like, 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 like I, I have, you know, let, let's have a real conversation, man. Joe was actually really, like, trying to rationalize it and be like, okay, yeah, you know, well, if you think about it, like, <laughs> trying to help him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In between he, you and him, like his one liners in that too are great. Bring on the bitches. I mean yeah. he's great in that. Yeah, no. He's such a troll in it. It's like <laughs> Then you're like so fuck, funny. It's like fucking tack, man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <It's> the, <laughs> but you know one of my favorite things of that movie I love the concept they were just like just some dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's it's just, just some, some dude. <laughs> Who is that? Yeah. Just some dude. <laughs> 
Which is, you know, it's very <laughs> relatable way. again because that's like something, you know, Vince and I would do. We're just like, who is that? Be like, ask hey, some some dude. dude it's you know. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> But I mean, just just yeah. the way that it shot the whole thing where you're at the the girl's house or the, or the, the you know their dads where they're and that that guy man I saw him in like an episode of Baywatch the other day the the, <laughs> the, the, the Laney's dad or whatever. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah he was in an yeah it was hilarious and the episode had Shawn Michaels the wrestler in it too. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and I was like, because I, I like I said, there's my. My what I'm watching, I'm st- stuck in my past. But anyway, we're sitting there watching on like yeah. Amazon, and I'm like, "That's the fucking dad from the Stone Age." <laughs> yeah, oh, he was amazing. I can't remember. It was like, um, I think he passed away, man. But like, I think his name was like David something. I can't remember his name. Um, but he was he was fantastic. How fun? He was like a, um, yeah, he, yeah, he was he was on kind of a, like a lot of TV series and stuff like that. Yeah, he looked like he was I remember did a bunch of stuff. Yeah, he was a good actor. I was like, he was like, I was like, I mean, every everyone was fantastic that I, uh, that was in that in the Stone Age. But um, yeah, he was like, all right, <laughs> this guy's like, he's, he's awesome. He's like such a dad, such a dick dad, <laughs> <laughs> very violent dad. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> comes and comes and like, kicks everyone's ass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it's great. <laughs> Like, There's some old dude kicking ass. Teenagers, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like kicking the shit out of all these people. <laughs> he sits, so down sits down and pours that drink and just sits there. Yeah. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah, he was on General Hospital and uh, oh shit, okay. Mary Tyler Moore Show. and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's been in a bunch. He's a theater life. actor, too. Awesome. He was on Buck Rogers. Yeah. That's awesome. That is awesome. Is it Buck Rogers? Yeah. Wow, okay. Huh. L.A. Law, Baywatch, Law and Order, Murder, She Wrote, Melrose Place, The X-Files, JAG. Hitting just about oh, all, damn, the, okay. all the shows. I mean, he's on wow. tons of... Oh, that's cool. He was in Return of Superfly. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's a good one. That, but but no, my favorite scene with him, I love that when you're like... You're like you just got her that poker shell so you can sport wood. It's like, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that whole scene's fucking hilarious. <laughs> fucking hubs. He's like, or he comes to the goddamn window that fucking no, umbrella. No, he's got the freaking umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> he gouts right through the back window. It's so... That was like a, that was like, that was like a one-take thing. They were like, we only have, I think it's called can- candy glass because it just like shatters. Like, yeah. You know? And little pieces, and I think it's made out of a similar material as candy. But like, they were like, "Okay, no pressure, guys." But you're gonna do a stunt. You gotta come. You gotta blast through the window, uh, make the jump, do this, and then grab the da 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 da, grab Joe, and then leap and jump over this kind of shit, and then run out of there. And you gotta do it in one take. <laughs> wow. Because <laughs> we don't have another. We don't have another glass. We only <laughs> have one. <laughs> yeah, it's cool seeing that. I'm like, day and all that. I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's rock it out. Let's do this, guy. I love. I remember the first time that I watched it. I thought the whole 2001 thing, where with Lainey, where you're, you're initially she's laying there and you go into the whole 2001 thing. I thought that was wild. Yeah, that whole thing is was. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like it's his conscience. Um, and I go, hmm. Yeah, that was that was that was trippy, but uh, it was cool though. I, I like that. Um, I like that twist. Or not even a twist, but just playing, um, having the opportunity to play. Like, there's so many, like, uh, I don't know, kids. Like, if you're playing a part of a, you know, younger, someone younger, you're a kid or a teenager, that it just, they get so played in a, in a, on or in a, in an authentic way. And, like, they don't, they like, they're, they're, they're not having deep thoughts or whatever, or we're not having deep thoughts or how to conscious about shit or whatever we're doing. Right. And I love that 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 moment actually, where you kind of see that like, you know, he's thinking or Joe's thinking like, wait a minute, maybe maybe she, she doesn't want this. Yeah. Like she's she's kind of she's kind of fucked up, and her dad she gets abused, and 
this, wait a minute, uh, this ain't, this, maybe this isn't the right thing to do. Was, yes, I want, yes, I want this, but no, I don't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was cool. Uh, it, it humanizes, like, the, the film, and, and I think that's one of those moments that really makes it relatable, and I think why, I think yeah. the film keeps getting another life every year is that the characters, like, despite the craziness and the, and the weird language, <laughs> that it is, it is relatable. Right. <laughs> like, you know, we show the, the, like, Joe doing the stuff that's not particularly, that's not cool, but, you know, in the long run, it kind of is. Right. And then you got, you know, the, the chemistry of Joe and Hub, you know, the characters of Joe and Hubs, and then, yeah. you know, he's just kind of like the straight up party animal, and he's like, you know, the the dude's dude. It's just like, you know, yeah. trying to get whatever he can out of anything. And then Joe is a lot more of the human side where he's like, no, nah, man, she's just cool, you know. <clears throat> yeah, it's right. not like that. Yeah. <laughs> so you got the two extremes. Yeah. I think it's a good balance. Yeah. The movie to me, too, was really relatable because I didn't feel, as a teen at the time, I could not relate to Dazed and Confused at all. Yeah. Good yeah. movie. But I never felt like yeah. I was in that... You know what I mean? Whereas this this movie felt way more approachable to me. Uh, Plus, we're like as a team, metalheads. Like well, not just but not just the, the movie just feels more relatable as opposed to. I think it's more of a relatable. I wasn't story. on the football team getting high and riding yeah. around with my friends yeah. hitting people no. with a paddle. I didn't do that, so like, over and I wasn't getting hit with a paddle because it's again like way that's still like it, it, good movie again, but just not relatable like yeah. that, like. Because I remember my yeah. friends being like, what the fuck? It's like, dude, this movie's like way better. Like, Stone Age is a shit. Like, this is like, <laughs> you know, like, it just, I don't know. It's, I think you can, oh, some yeah, people yeah. can relate with stuff and so you can't, you know, and like all my friends, you know, oh, what about this? It's like, those are two different fucking things, dude. Those are two different worlds, like, for me, like, because. Yeah. Yeah. Also, we all, we all weren't, I guess, you know, thank you, but also, I, I agree because, like, it was reading the script, I was like, this is well we also knew we had you know we did like shorter versions of it where I kind of got a feel of what they were doing with the actual script and the arc of like you know what happens and the night to, to, to Joe and um, the kind of what you take from it and the sort of like uh, I don't know the, the sort of like sub world of you know this is just these two guys but that's kind of that's life I mean, like yeah. usually you know I, I, I might, like, the majority of I would imagine everyone's growing up experience wasn't like they were the captain of the football team and the, hot, the hottest girl in school and, and had all these friends and like and you see these, these movies and these tales of you know coming of age kind of style films and it's like you just they're just like slinging postcards and snapshots of like right. um, nostalgia and this is what it was like and, and they just break it down to like yes every this is you know this is this section there's the football team there's cheerleaders there's this there's the stoners there's the geeks there's the nerds there's the, 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 the good looking people bad looking people and this movie just kind of just jumped in and said this is escape this, this is like not that we're just uh, we're going to tell a tale of these two guys and their night which is basically what people <laughs> did yeah you know and, and, and not bringing all the elements of like um the, the social structure and everything. Right, you're just trying you to know? find a party and I, I thought the, the hot dog chicks were hilarious and, you know, the... <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> And we, oh you God. know, that's actually relatable too. You know, you have those, not exactly like the same kind of scenario, but you have people that you don't party with that know about parties and you you don't want to hang out with them. You're just kind of like, where's the party? Yeah. And, and then they show up later no, totally. and you're just like, ah, oh, fuck, you know, it's like, they always keep popping yeah, back up later. It's like And then behind Muldoon's were all the other guys were those awesome. The, <laughs> with the keg. Yeah. yeah. They're like, oh, they're all in the back in the backyard. Pussy <laughs> rich boy beer. <laughs> 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 stuck in the back with a keg. Which, uh, which uh, my friend circles and stuff going to parties and stuff like that. After, you know, you've been to a couple like rich kid parties and that was usually how it was. Like we would yeah. build a long air, whatever the, the other kid, different kids that, you know. I guess the burnouts nowadays would uh, they would mm-hmm. all hang out and congregate more in the back and away from the actual party and just do their own thing and especially if there was beer. Yeah, you got in. Yeah, yeah, you found you found you always, you always found you know, like your group. Yeah. you know, like lunchtime in high school, just like you go to your wherever whatever accepts you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The cool 
the coolest people that can possibly like you. You hang out, like, go with them, right? Um, if possible. But even the even the party had that culture too, which was really cool. Yeah, and showing that. And of course, now doing you know the whole thing with JPC is hilarious. <clears throat> Cause it's like you let our oh, chicks yeah. in. <laughs> He's like, yeah, it's ladies' night. <laughs> yeah, it's ladies' night. <laughs> yeah, I like our little argument afterwards when we don't get into the party and we're, like, yeah. we're just hitting each other. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that being like, man, we're so like mean to each other. Yeah, even though like we're kind, you know, like uh, like we're we're better nerds than you. We're cooler nerds than you guys. Yeah, you guys ruined it for us like, somehow. <laughs> And then you leaving with Laney. He's like, I got some limbo in the torpedo. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I gotta ask you, the, the, the monkey thing at the pool is fucking... Okay. Hilarious. That's, <laughs> I remember just thinking the first time I watched that. Which out of nowhere, he's kind of trying to interrupt Hubs and her. Like, Let me show you how it's done. She got her top off. And then the, the guy that owns the house where he looks like fucking Lou Albano, he's all, they're like... <laughs> Trying to like take you out. I know, yeah. It's like a really big like um, Samoan guy or something. You know, the guy from Grateful Dead or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Comes out. It's like you kids get out of my. Yeah, room. that was. Yeah, that, that was a, a bit of a challenge moment where they um, where that came from was, uh, Jim. We were shooting set up for the scene, and then uh, Jim said, "Hey man, come here." And he's like, "We got a problem." I'm like, what? What's the problem? And he says, "Well." we need to get hubs out of the pool. There's got to be a reason why hubs comes out of the pool. And, and, the, and, and for the guy to come out. And so you guys can run, run out. And if, if the guy comes out and hubs is still in the pool, then hubs is caught. So I have to get him out of the pool and somehow you guys make some sort of enough racket Beside the fact that you guys are in the pool, that could be alarming enough. But like, he goes, oh, we just, we just missed it. We don't know how to do it. Huh. Do you got any ideas? And I thought of this thing that me and my buddy um, David used to do when we were just bored or wanted to get crazy. It was just like, <laughs> do that. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> you just, you just taunt each other yeah, like but, monkeys. <laughs> and like, and if, you could, if you could imagine, like, explaining to a director, we're like, okay, listen, I got this idea. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go full Planet of the Apes, um, and uh, Hubs is going to get it. Yeah. We, we have this inside joke, he, and we're going to trash <laughs> all the pool furniture, and that's going to get his attention and him out of the pool. And then, um, that will, <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> shaking his head. He's like, um, okay, yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't think of anything else. So, I uh, give it a shot. Just. Just do it, and I remember explaining it to Brad and being like, "Okay, dude, this is what we got to do." And then Brad was like, "I thought, okay, all right, all right, okay, I think I got this." And then we, <laughs> we, just, went, we just fucking went for it. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, and afterwards, they, they were like, "That fucking worked. That was that was right on. Strange <laughs> acting choice, but yeah, unorthodox." <laughs> I think the best part about it was that. You know, he did it to interrupt Hubs initially and just cause Racket to get into trouble. Yeah. But then Hubs is in on it and he gets out of the pool and starts doing it. That's the best part is that yeah. you think it's going to piss him off and yeah. he's fucking walking around like a monkey. <laughs> he's just, and, then, and then Lainey's left there by herself with these two dudes that want to get yeah. with her and she's just like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I know, yeah. It's, it's like, it's like had to like dig deep in our like psychology of like of our relationship. Like we have this thing that he cannot refuse to do like you yeah. cannot if I go monkey you have to do it that's, <laughs> our, like, that's well, our agreement and our friendship you have to do this or you're in violation of you know some weird you know stranger things code thing right. and you can't you have to do it <laughs> <laughs> that's the one, probably the funniest part about the whole thing is just that it's like a it's, yeah it's like you said like a code where we're just like in his brain it triggers it and he like does it no matter what you know it's like a Winter Soldier yeah. thing. And <laughs> yeah, it's primal. Yeah. And the great thing is, like, there's that, just happened to be that big giant peaky. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> and they start throwing shit in the pool, and then, you know, Lainey has fun with it, and she's like, okay, these guys are just not. Was that, the, then the house you all kept going to, the, the supposed to be the girl's house, was that somebody's house you all knew that you all were using, or? No, it was, um, 
It was just like a house that they uh, rented to film in. Oh, okay, wow. Um, from, yeah, I don't. I mean, know it looked when it you was. watch it. When I still watch it, it looks like somebody's house. It's fucking cool. Like it's like. Yeah. It doesn't. You know yeah, what I mean? No, it doesn't I mean, feel I, like a movie set. It feels like somebody's house. Fucking. You know. Yeah, I don't. I don't know for sure, but I mean, I think they just like it was a house that just was available. Um, you know, or they, they, you know, they, they have like the people that like um, location that you know sure. scouts and managers stuff like that that find all that stuff for sure. films. And I think they just, you know, they came across it. And I don't know if there was a family that lived there and then they moved out <laughs> for, you know, right. for the two weeks that we were there. Or, or <laughs> I have no clue. Uh, I have no idea. But I remember, like, walking in and going, whoa. This, yeah. Is, did, they, did they make this? Or was it, <laughs> like, just frozen in time capsule, frozen in time? Like, you know, 70s house on... You know, <laughs> yeah, but, it's, it's chill. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's the whole, all of the scenes that are shot there. I just, I don't know, man. I, like I said, I've watched it so many times. Like, and I found it recently, like on that that uh, the Tubi. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Tubi. Yeah. Man, I, and it looks, it's cool. And of course, I've got the DVD of it. But yeah, a Blu-ray release would be fucking yeah. awesome of it, just because it's, it's, I to me, it's a. It, you really think cult movie it is it's it's I mean I fucking love it I don't know how many people approach you about it but like I said I'm probably one of a bunch of people but I, I love the yeah. movie like it's just everything about it just the story and the music and it's just I think it's the just, fact that it's you know like a, a time stamp but also it, it's so relatable that you can go through any time and relate to it it's not like oh I, you know I'm not in that time period but like it also has it's own world in and of itself to where it's like yeah, you almost don't yeah, feel like it's time stamped. Like you had to be at that age to like have all the stuff happen. Like it feels like the Stone Age feels like its own universe almost because of the language and just yeah, it's the cool. way that they are. But in a sense, it's I, also very relatable to the way the characters are and like how their human, you know, their humanity and stuff. And that, that thing, there's so many different things yeah. you can get from that film. It's very unique. Yeah, thanks, man. Like I, I think they, um, you know, they, they intended that. that. Like they weren't really saying, hey this is the 70s or this is the early 80s or whatever right. whatever it is they just they wanted to create its own universe I think they, they succeeded oh yeah because um but people have kind of assumed like oh it's a 70s film because there's like a lot of fashion and stuff like that that represents that and right but yeah I think they were that's what they were going for I believe um that would have to be something that you know you know Jimmy Rich can answer but like right I, that's what I got that, that they were like kind of creating its own thing with you know with the language and what we were doing and just keeping it about the story and the relationships um, and what we're doing as opposed to this you know you know postcard from the past kind of yeah. experience which I, which I think Days and Confused went for right um, and a lot of yeah, a lot of films go for it. they're like check it out you know um, or like even Stranger Things it's like check oh my god I remember that yeah um, now they got now they got the money to do that but like um but yeah, but I think that it's, it's, it's contained, it's like its own. Yeah, and I think you know a lot of those other yeah. films they timestamp it because it's like a nostalgia factor, but they kind of stay there to where you almost can't relate to it unless you were there. Or, you know, it's like oh yeah. yeah, you know. But but with the Stone Age, like I said, it stood the test of time because it's not exactly time stamped. You know, it's more or, <laughs> or less just uh, open. For whatever, they are confused very time stamp. I mean, you remember like even the marquee, yeah, because the movie theater's got like family plot playing from Hitchcock, mm-hmm. and it's got like you know they're going to get what Aerosmith tickets, I think, in it or Kiss tickets yeah. or something. But you know, they got the Blue Oyster Cult thing in, in Stone Age, but with I don't know, with Days and Confused, it seemed more or less like the whole culture and everything. Oh no, no, very, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. very yeah. time stamp, and it's like yeah, I think he wants it time stamped. He feels yeah. like it's, yeah. and that's cool. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah, the, yeah, like the, the, I mean, we're. There are certain things that like are non-negotiable as far as what time period that like eight yeah. tracks. Yeah, but yeah, that, but it's still it's you know, cool because Coca-Cola it just feels show. like it's breathing on its own. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can't can't negotiate what time period. Eight <laughs> yeah, but it's still it's still but, cool though. It's because it's it with yeah. with Stone Age. It's subtle. It's not like you know. Where's it? No, 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 no. It's not like. Yeah, it's like not over. It's not like being beaten over your head, and like every every opportunity of you know like 
okay, now they're playing this game, and now they're drinking this drink, and now they're at this place, and now they're yeah. playing, you know, it's like, we're, you're like, okay, I get it, I get it, that <laughs> this is, you know, this time period, I, know, I get it, it's 1985, you yeah. said it at the beginning, you know, <laughs> opening credit, it's 1985, <laughs> you know, like, leave me alone. Yeah. Like there's too much uh, branding in this now. It's just you know. Now, did they ever when the movie when you guys got done with it? Did they ever? Did you get to see it theatrically at all? Or I did. Yeah, um, we did. I remember the, the screening. The, first, the screening of it was insane. I was like, pissed my pants, nervous, <laughs> and and it was. I was like, what? You know, my first uh, like. It, it hit me like, oh my god! I'm like, the, I mean, this is like, I'm, I'm in like in every scene. Like, holy shit, this is ridiculous! And um, like, how's that gonna play out? And am I gonna look stupid? All, all that shit. But then right. it started, and we we're full theater, and people were laughing so fucking hard <laughs> that I couldn't hear the dialogue. Wow, that's awesome! And yeah, I was just sitting there, I, like, I, I just, I kind of went out of my body with it. Yeah, you know, and then the way I, the way I am, I kind of like scrutinize myself, like as everyone else does. Yeah. I'm like, damn it, why did I? <laughs> why did I why, 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 I don't know. I like her stuff. I'm like, what the fuck? I should have went back. Um, <laughs> or, 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 like, stupid shit that I, wouldn't bother me anymore. But like, right. you know, or like, oh man, that's, I didn't realize my nose is that big. Or like, <laughs> being <laughs> nervously like self-critical. <laughs> yeah, but um, eventually then I just kind of got into it. Yeah. Um, watching it and like I forgot I, like, I forgot it was me in a weird way if that makes any sense that's pretty cool um, man. and just and just kind of like cause it's uh, yes there's a lot that is you know you draw from yourself you know to you know play the part of you know create the character yeah. or just be or just be and um but I kind of I kind of lost my like me for a minute and watching it was totally bizarre man I was like watching me be not me with aspects of me <laughs> and, yeah. and forgetting that I'm it's me watching me in the theater it was, it was like totally fucking weird and um, and just and like listening to everyone laughing yeah and then getting quiet when they you know other parts and then it, it was uh, I'm really glad I got that experience to, to you know see it in the theater with a lot of people because um, that was it was cool and, I, and then I was like hoping oh man this, this movie's gonna oh it's gonna be great yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be this is gonna be awesome uh, but it didn't get um, it just didn't get like a, a, a wide release from what I understand yeah. it just got released like maybe in a couple theaters here and there and then it was released in areas that it just people weren't gonna get it or didn't get it right and then it got got shelved and then boom it got another life um, on video yeah. and it just like freaking took off I mean, if you think about it, that, blows me away. That completely astounds me. That uh, you know, without a lot of marketing or whatever, just word of mouth. Yeah. Um, and people passing it from you know tape to tape to tape. That um, it's like Iron Maiden fans. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I mean, it is. It's exactly. <laughs> it's a great description. <laughs> okay. Well, you don't hear Iron Maiden. Well, now you do. But like, you know, you don't hear like Iron Maiden. You didn't hear like Iron Maiden on the radio. Right. <laughs> yeah. had, someone had to someone had to like play him for you and go, Oh shit, these guys are amazing. <laughs> but uh yeah, that's uh yeah, it, it's still to, I mean, to even talk, be talking to you guys right now and have this conversation this long after something after the movie was made is astonishing to me. Yeah. It really it really is. And then nowadays you have more things like uh you know, like the terms cult classic really keeps things alive too because they're like, oh, that means I gotta go get that or I gotta check it out. Then, yeah. You know? And, um, yeah. It, it's something that I think hopefully will eventually give it a newer life and put it on Blu ray and then it'll be thrown around even more when that happens because more people are gonna know what it is once it it's comes great out. that it's streaming on so many things too. Yeah, I love that. Now, that's really, yeah. I think, brought it back a little bit because that's how I got to see it, you know. And, um, you know, Vincent for the longest time was like, you have to see this movie. It's, you know, it's basically us or like our and our other friend like cruising around. It's kind of, you know, it was like, you'll just laugh your balls off. So he was like, I got this too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you got it, it's on there right now. So I went straight home after work and I watched that movie. And uh, yeah, I've watched it like two or three times since then. So <laughs> that's just. Whereas me, like I grew up with it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, literally, I, I never, seriously, I saw it in a, I was 
yeah. traveling to go to a concert in, in, in Atlanta, and we watched it in like a fucking yeah. day's in, and that's the first time I saw it. Yeah. And then when I got home, I literally, you know, this is all pre-DVR. I remember sitting there with a fucking videotape on record, like, yeah. oh shit, it's coming on, I'm going to fucking record it. And I record it, had that, you know, VHS copy of yeah. forever. And then finally, conned the woman down at the video store to sell it to me for like 50 bucks. Like, can I buy this fucking thing? It's a one <laughs> you know. And, you know, so it's, 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 I'm, it's been since it, I saw it. Like it's been like yeah. part of my stuff. Like it's just a protective thing that and I, I was, like. And I was uh, four years old when it came out. Cause it came out in '94. See, I was. Uh, so I, Damn. Yeah. I was <laughs> uh, twenty-one when it came out. Twenty-one. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hmm. Right on. Yeah. It's a. Um, yeah. It's a. Yeah. It's um. Yeah. Like I said, it's it, it's a uh, it's it's wild. The thing just uh, it sticks around. It's like a, I think it's gonna become like a comfort food film, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's what we like to call the uh, lobby films, you know, films from our uh, past. Yeah, hang like on you have to. your comfort, you have your comfort foods, your your go tos, and you know, movies you can always uh, become like friends in a way. Like you put yeah. them, put them on when you're like, I don't know, just cleaning the house or just goofing around and just have them on. Yeah, it's, it's just feels good to have it, you know. But um, it is. It's it a comforting like it, movie it, to have on. For me, um, yeah, <laughs> and they like, and for some reason, it seems that like people find like new things and new nuances that like I completely forgot about, or they'll you know notice or point out. But like, uh, it's an email or like you know through Facebook or something, asking a question. <laughs> yeah, they'll be like, so this this that that moment when you're making the weed, you know, in the <laughs> the, the pipe, and the, did you really stab yourself or like? <laughs> <laughs> And I'll be like, yeah, I did. Actually, I did. I did. But like, how did you know that? Like, when or like weird stuff. Man. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, very cool. I mean, for me, like, just all of it, and Officer Dean. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> oh. Oh shit. <laughs> sure. I mean, just the whole movie. Like, it's it's one of the. I can put that movie on. I can have. Because my job currently really sucks, and it's one of those. I've literally recently went home and watched it, and I'm like, I'm good. Like, I I feel better. Like, it's uh, it's a comfort. Like what nah. you're talking about. It's a good thing to have on. It makes well, you forget about the shitty it makes life. It makes you feel good that you did something. You know that it could, you know do that. Because I, I have those things for me. Um. So that that's just uh, I, don't know. I, I appreciate that. That's, that's awesome to hear. What's one of your uh, comfort films that you put on? Um. Well, usually, uh, usually <laughs> I usually put on Fight Club. <laughs> Hell yeah, it's a good one. Uh, Fight Club. Uh, I said that for some reason. It's like, it's like I just felt you know the, the first Matrix. Yeah. Um, uh, up in Smoke, She's and Chong. <laughs> there we go. That's <laughs> awesome. That's a great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's just fucking hilarious. Yeah. Um. Uh, Caddyshack. Oh, love um, yeah, Young Frankenstein. Um, good the the not ashamed to say it, the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy. That yeah, stuff's that's good. You can leave it on for like days in your house, and it'd be good. <laughs> it's good. Come yeah, back home, leave it on. It. Come back home, and you're like, oh, it's still on the first one. You know, the, but the extended because yeah. I got the extended editions. All those, you know, those are nice to kind of relax to. Yeah, but those 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 uh, got like a lot of play in the three hundred. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, Gladiator, I would say, yep. uh, for some reason. <laughs> um, yeah, those, those those movies for some reason. You know, I don't know why. Uh, actually, my favorite would be uh, comfort film uh, is Conan the Barbarian, the original. That's, that's, that's amazing. Love that movie. Yeah, I just like whatever. Uh, that's that's my go-to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I need something. I need I need I need to pull up the big guns. <laughs> <laughs> that's the real big guns there. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. the shit. And do you like Destroyer? I, I, everybody makes me eat crow for liking the second one. I don't know. I like both of them. The what, what? What was that? Conan the Destroyer. Do you like that one too? Mm, it's like it grew on me, but the whole um, you know, what was like Wilt Chamberlain? Or Jones. <laughs> I was having, I had, <laughs> I was having problems with that. <laughs> like, As a kid, 
kid, the mirror lizard guy scared the hell out of me. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're like the horrible, like, special effect at the end. <laughs> <laughs> the dagger from the, 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 the scrolls of Skellis. <laughs> no, it's like, what are these, like, slow motion, stop motion film ice freezing? Like, I don't know what the fuck they did, but, like, it was, <laughs> like, you, how did you fuck that up? <laughs> it's it's. I mean, it, it is. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. That's that's. See, that's mine of the two to yeah. And I don't know why, because it it is an awful film. I no, mean, I'll even Arnold it, you know. Arnold's a straight. I mean, he is wooden anyway. He's a straight wood in that movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, then if you actually you got Bob the Goon like, from the first Batman movie yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. And then if you if you continue the weird like un unconnected saga, but it's kind of connected, is if you watch like Red Sonia. Oh yeah, that was and, and, yeah. like. It's like I think I think she's drunk in the movie or something. <laughs> <laughs> You're like on a mountain like all the time. Taking, yeah, it's just like she's taking it seriously. Like, this is a big role for me, and he's just kind of like hanging out, being like, "Oh, don't feel like being here." Like, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! <laughs> but that that's a, that's a guilty pleasure of mine. Yeah, is <laughs> is the other ones, but the real movie was Conan. The first, and then the other two were like, oh, "Okay, all right, whatever." Yeah, if I. If if I have a lot of housework, like a lot, like a lot, then I'll watch that one. My, you know, one of my favorite things of his to watch, I, this is a huge guilty pleasure of mine, but Hercules in New York with the dub, it's got to have the dub. It's oh hysterical. My God. I saw where he oh fights the But you got to have the dub. You can't do the with his accent. It's not funny with his. To me, it's the, with the dub. Where he's talking with someone else's. It's so crazy. <laughs> That's like the first thing he <laughs> did when he came from Austria to here. So he was like. Or, or, or Dolph Lundgren as He Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We actually did. I have to tell you this. This is funny. We did an, uh, an episode of a Phantasm of our podcast with. Uh, two of my friends in the death metal band exhumed, and we watched Masters of the Universe. <laughs> oh shit! We actually watched it for like the whole thing and sat there and talked through it. It was great. So it's pretty fun. <laughs> so that's another guilty pleasure of mine. That thing is so bad. You know, some films, you know, you just oh watch campy stuff. You know, because we're generally like horror guys. Yeah. We like pretty much a lot of that stuff, but the you know, the cheesier the, the better it is. The yeah, more fun it is. Fun. Yeah. I mean, as long as, like, the, you know, to me, like, I'm easily entertained to it. You know, I'm very forgiving yeah. um, when I'm watching shit. But as long as the story's intact and, like, this, you know, it's, it's like, I, I want to know what's going to, like, how they're going to get out of this or yeah. what's going to happen or, you know, any, like, where I'm still freaking, inter- you know, or, or it's, like, colorful the app or, like, it's some semi-authentic right. uh, to, you know, where the fight seems cool. Um, then, then I'll, then I'll, <laughs> then he got me for the whole thing. Right. But, but, yeah, very rare. I'll just be like, no, screw this. <laughs> and then I'm out. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, one that was pretty bad, that new, uh, Predators movie. That was a, that was a stinker. Yeah, man. There, there was that one, and there was, what's well, this? This one I was like, why the hell did they, <laughs> it was like a remake. Yeah. Like, it was a term, okay, the Terminator. You see the Terminator remake? Which one? Is it like the last one they did? Um, shit. Uh, I was, uh... That new one was terrible. Yeah, it was, it was, um... It, it, it was just for no reason. Um, was it Genesis, or was yeah, it the... That Salvation oh, yeah, one that the, didn't even have Arnold in it? Might have been, might have been, yeah, might have been Salvation. The one with Christian Bale um, in it? Yeah, and it's got... Uh, the, the name of the actor is escaping me. He's a good actor, a really good actor, too. Uh, the guy from um, Avatar, um... Sam no, Worthington? No, it was, it was, um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a reference. He played Alexander, um, Colin Fell, I, I believe. Oh, that was a Total Recall. That's it, that's it. Thank oh, that was so yeah, bad. That movie's a turd. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> really like, like, okay, for one, Total Recall's a classic. I yeah, agree. So, yeah, it's Paul Verhoeven's like my favorite too, so that was... I, like I could barely watch yeah. that remake. It was just a disaster. Yeah, that was just, that was just a whole separate film. I'm like, this is this is this is like what the like? Why did you and Rachel Weisz? Why, like, why? You know, I don't know. Yeah, I, I was like, it, it, it even just kind of like it just it even kind of like it went off the whole the subject matter. <laughs> like, yeah, how is this still? It's like it's like Point Break. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, 
Well, Total Recall, it's like the original one has its own world, and it's like super well done, and they do like the mm-hmm. the whole like neo retro style and stuff really really well. And then the new one yeah. just seemed like it was like Minority Report or something. Like, it was <laughs> yeah, just it, it, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it was just bad. It was. It was. It was basically like a remake of Minority Report. Yeah. <laughs> it should have just been. And... Yeah, it should have just been Minority Report. That's what it looked like yeah. and felt like. Did not yeah. feel like the world of yeah. Total Recall. That was very just like a you know yeah, like a grimy sort of Mars and shit, and a, also a simulation. Like another, you know. Yeah, like a fucking another Philip K. Dick fucking yeah. thing. But, um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so now you, uh, you direct some films too, right? Yeah, I got into, um, uh, kind of making my own stuff. And, um, uh, you know, writing, mostly writing. Yeah. And the producing. Um, the directing hasn't hit yet, but that, I'm sure that will, that will, that will happen. Um, with, you know, as I progress with this whole kind of adventure. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like the last film I, uh, I, was, I co-wrote it I produced it and ended up being in it it was this weird time travel movie called Counterclockwise yeah. which uh, came out a couple of years came out a couple of years ago um, and it's like <laughs> I think someone sent me an email where uh, like I was saying like, so is this what Joe, happened to Joe he became a scientist <laughs> <laughs> it's like a meta universe <laughs> like, or something <laughs> <laughs> I'm like easy on the mess dude <laughs> <laughs> It's like it's not like one big story. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been doing that and um, sort of like sticking my toes back in the acting water and um, I don't know, making movies again, which is which is really fucking great, honestly. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. And hopefully, it'll still uh, you know bring back Stone Age a little bit to more of the the audience now and and keep that going too and you know that'll add more stuff to your yeah. list. Yeah, put, put, put some more stuff in the, um, you know, whatever you want to call it, the IMDb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, the, uh, in the in the in the collection, but yeah, man, yeah, appreciate you asking. But uh, yeah, now it's uh, getting more on the like behind the scenes um, creative process of uh, writing them, producing them, um, and then you know with a certain projects where I'm like, yeah, I totally want to do that. I'm really into that. Um, putting on the acting hat and, and diving in but um I, unfortunately I can't play stoners anymore. what maybe I can't I can't play <laughs> yeah, you gotta grow the hair back out of, you know. yeah right <laughs> yeah I need help with, I need some help with that yeah <laughs> <laughs> they make it look but they just CGI your hair yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> my hair. Yeah, well, it's, it's so crazy now because, like, you know, those Marvel films, they just have so much damn Disney money that they can, you know, make those actors look like <laughs> 10 <20. laughs> years younger. Yeah, and it looks it, it looks legit, you know. Well, it's like freaking, like, everything's like an app or a filter. Yeah. yeah I mean, and they can like, just... do you even need actors anymore? Do you need anybody? <laughs> you, like, get your fucking family dog to do an action film and then you can dog the human filter on it? Like, yeah. That's kind of how they, you know, and all those films blow me away. Like, uh, you know, it's not even bad CGI anymore. It's just like that they actually made that, you know, Robert Downey Jr. look like he's twelve in this fucking Iron Man movie. Right? <laughs> he's like, yeah, you know, it's it's insane. Or they did it with uh, in Captain Marvel, Samuel Jackson. You know, they made him look like mm-hmm. 90s yeah. Samuel Jackson he looked ridiculous it's like wow this is no they probably like dig up dead actors and just like stick them in the it's like come on we got like this like Clark Gable yeah, yeah. well they did it in Rogue Gable. One remember they did it with uh, <laughs> they did it with Peter Cushing in fucking Rogue One yeah and, and Leia you know but Leia looked kind of <laughs> CGI a little bit <laughs> Just find somebody like, that can. That happen. Yeah, they, they, just, <laughs> they can find some like Vegas impressionist that just can do all these voices for them. dead actors. Exactly. Yeah, three, you know, and I'd be like, okay. Stone Age yeah. Two, it's you and Elvis. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh god. 
These aren't jugs. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, check out the jugs. You want to have the grocery ore. <laughs> yeah, quite. <laughs> I'd pay to see that, though, honestly. <laughs> I would, too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Wow. Who knows, man? Who knows? So, uh, do you have anything coming up that you'd like to plug or anything you're working on you can talk about? Um, like, uh, different screenplays, but, like, it's not, you know, can't really talk about them until they're, sure. like, out, you know, or, like, in, in motion. Yeah. Um, it was, like, this uh, bizarre movie I did, uh, I think, last year called Phone Book. Okay. I, I, play, I play, like, this kind of, like, a big Lebowski kind of guy, this kind of this dude who just is just like, you know, he doesn't have a job, he's lazy as fuck, he's just kind of hanging out, there's nothing, <laughs> um, and <he's, laughs> he doesn't pay his bills, so his internet gets blown out, and, and, you know, all that's left is his, you know, he can call on the phone, he's got his phone, he's got a cell phone, yeah. but he finds like an old, he finds an old phone book, like, like when you actually use to write down people's numbers, Yeah. and, and he just kind of like, says he's bored, and he just starts randomly calling people. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and, he's like, and, he's, and he's like, hi, he's, you know, so he's, I guess I just played on the stoner. And he, so he starts fucking with people. That's amazing. <laughs> and um, he causes all this crazy shit with all these people that like, his phone numbers have changed, there's new people there, and he's like asking, he's like, is Dave there? No, no, Dave, huh? And but, like, with somebody else, and he just starts fucking with them, being bored, and creates like all this, all this crazy shit. <laughs> um, that was really fun to play, actually. We'll have to watch um, that. But the great, yeah, that's. That, I think that comes out in October. Oh, that's amazing. Um, and then I then I had like a, a quick part. Um, I don't know if it's going to be in it or not, but the uh, which is really cool. I got to jump into the DC universe. Yeah. And and play some sort of yeah, play some like uh, leader of the, the Spring. I think it was the Spring Hill Soldiers or something. Huh. In a up and coming like uh, offshoot from Harley Quinn. Um, oh wow saga yeah that was cool that was badass and uh yeah that's, I'll, that's, I'll leave it at that those are, those are my two plugs oh yeah <laughs> well man this has been absolutely awesome to talk to you and then to uh you know get this 25th anniversary of, of the Stone Age and I love the movie and just yeah, watching man. and this is one of you know Vincent's favorite movies and uh, it's awesome for him to show it to me and then get to do this with you. It's just been really cool. So I can't thank you for the awesome. bottom of my heart for doing this. It's real. This is awesome to get to talk to you. Excellent. I appreciate it. You guys were actually like some. Sometimes like oh, um, people want to want to chat. And I'm just kind of like fighting through it. Yeah. But I actually genuinely enjoy talking to you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course, man. We really appreciate it. Yeah. It's it's it was amazing to have you on. It's like I said I, to ask you some questions. I love <clears throat> love that movie. I mean. And it's just, it was fun. It's like, I feel like, uh, you know, you get to, you watch something so many times, it's just neat to get to actually talk to somebody that was part of it. So it's, it's amazing to get to talk yeah. to you about it. So really appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Yeah. yeah. You know, they bring, brings it to life. You know, well, well I enjoyed our, uh, our conversation and our time and reliving those moments and, and some new ones. <laughs> Hell yeah, of course, man. Man, this has been amazing. And, uh, you know, we look forward to all your upcoming projects. Uh, we've got phone book coming out in October. We're really excited to see that, and uh, hopefully Stone Age gets put out on Blu-ray or something. We'll figure out a way to get you back on, and, and we'll, you know, hopefully talk again, stay in touch. Sounds good, man. We'll appreciate the call, and um, let me know, uh, if, you know, if and when you're going to air it, and I'll, I'll give it a listen. Hell yeah. We'd love that. Thank you so much, man. You got it. Well, this is Michael Coppolo, and you are listening to the Phantasm Podcast. Or... <laughs>